Give me one sec. So we, last time, did get our sin burned. We delivered a message to a dude for <laughs> Kindly Chang. We are now living on a big boat there. And I guess just going to be doing some odd jobs for her while she uh, finds out more information on the plastic-faced man. The plastic-faced man who killed my father. Okay, I bought a new drone, but I don't have enough money to buy much, so that's all I bought. No, 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 I didn't, that isn't all I bought. I also bought uh, a new outfit, so that's slightly new armor. What's my mission? Activate the mission computer. Talk to some more people. Let's talk to Jin over here. Gin. As you approach the young, the small landing, you see three men: two elders and the younger man, hunched over a go board. Okay, that's what that is. The juxtaposition of the two white-haired, white-bearded men and the black-haired man is almost comical. Together, the three resemble the small black and white stones of their game. Now, one of these people is bald, so this is this is a lie. There's a brown-haired man, a white-haired man, and a bald man. Despite the variety of ambient distractions, the three men remain acutely focused on the game. One of the elders, a round-faced man with a be beatific smile. Is that really spelled like that? A beatific? Nah, I gotta look that up. There's no you in it? Oh, because that's not what that... Okay, it just means happy. Blissfully happy. How the frick is that pronounced? Beatific. Beatific. Ow, oh, a beatific. Um, smile. Carefully picks up a small black stone and places it on the board. Oh, it says BRB. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Alex. I would have that I would have just sat there for like an hour with that there. Um Jeez. Uh, let me wiggle this around as well. Whoop. That's better. Um, but yeah, a beatific smile. He carefully picks up a black stone and places it on the board. His opponent snorts, and a small smile flashes across his long face. Almost carelessly, he snatches a white stone and deposits it on the board. The smiling man groans, and the long-faced one proceeds to collect several black pieces off the board. Ah, you got me there, Jin. Ha 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 Why, hello there, young woman. Something you need? It's just a gawker shoe. It's your turn. Um. The name's The Plague. Got a second to answer a question or two? Well, I could use a short break. What about you, Jin? Fine, I'll have a short break. Okay, so... I guess this is supposed to be this brown-haired man. He looks cool. 
The skin on his face is smooth and supple, with only the suggestions of creases of the eye, mouth, and forehead. But small gestures, a blink, a flare of his nostrils, briefly revealed the lines of his face. The man's eyes rise from the go-board and study the elders. He nods. Um... I've been hearing about strange dreams. Have you had any nightmares recently? Why, what a coincidence, young lady. It wasn't but an hour ago that we were all discussing that very thing. We've been having bad dreams, every one of us. Uh, yeah, let's compare notes. Is that right? Can't say I'm comfortable with giving a stranger details about my dreams. Oh, don't mind him. He's always been a poor sport. But he raises a good point. Some of our dreams contain information best left private, just as yours do, I'm sure. Having just met, how can we be sure you'll respect our personal information? Wow. I'll tell you. The younger man's voice cuts through the din like a razor, and the elders fall silent. He turns to you and locks his eyes. Dark orbs that burn with piercing scrutiny onto yours. I believe you're trustworthy. Please, the plague, make yourself comfortable. I'll share my dream with you. Uh, go. I dreamed of a long, dingy hall. When faced with such a thing, one generally walks its length. So I lifted my right foot and placed it in front of me. But upon taking that first step, I found myself instead drawn down an alleyway to my left. It wasn't there before this alley. It appeared only as began to walk. Only as, only as I, maybe, began to walk. As I moved down the alley, I found myself surrounded by friends and loved ones. They all stood there, silently watching me with smiles on their faces. And as I passed each one of them, they fell to the ground in my wake, dropping like puppets with severed strings. Somehow, I knew that if I followed this road to the end, I could have everything I'd ever dreamed of. But I woke before I could reach it. Hmm. I, too, saw the long hall. My own experience was different, however. This hall was far off in the distance, and I was looking down on it from a strange angle, as though I were perched on a wall like a gargoyle. You know, young woman, the plague, you look very much like the person I saw walking that hall. She moved steadily down the path, walking at an even pace, and just behind her, a great and terrible shadow followed. Of course, I didn't have the best view up there on that wall, or wherever I was. It could have been anyone. Perhaps this old mind of mine is seeing your face now and misremembering my dream. All right, Jean, go ahead. I've, I've changed my mind. I don't want to share my dream. Nonsense. Master Lau and I have both told her our dreams. Now it's your turn. No. Yeah, I don't want to force him to... See? Straight from the horse's mouth. I don't have to. Jean, this is important. <sighs> all right, all right. But don't you go repeating any of this, you hear me? My dream began as a nightmare. I dreamed of the failures and mistakes that I've made throughout my life. The people I've let down, the competitors I've crushed, the wife who died in the hospice without me. I dreamed of the family that I abandoned. But then, then I dreamed of the walled city. I stood before it, and its door opened to me, and when I passed inside, all of my guilt fell away, fell away. It was as though the city had absolved me, had washed away my guilt, and I remember feeling happy. There, I did it. You happy? Thank you, Jean. Um... Uh... 
Sure is boring around here. Um, I won't abuse your personal information. Yeah, yeah, no. Oh, this is... Yeah, yeah. Now, can we change the subject? Uh, sure. Yeah, good luck. Good luck, guys. What the heck is this parlor? Is this just the magic shop that I'm never going to use? Yeah, that's definitely what this is. A mild scent, sweet and slightly herbal, is the first thing you notice upon entering the old shop. Its quarters are cramped, made smaller by the display cases and furniture packed inside. The walls are lined with bookshelves, and the tables and chairs are stacked with old tomes. A few titles jump out at you. Lucid Dreaming, an exploration of the inner self. Dream Logic. Nocturnal Visitations. Overall, the place feels lived in, if disorganized. Not quite cluttered, but close. Milling at the front of the store is the shopkeeper, lost in a book of her own. She is tall for a human, probably close to two meters in height. Her physique is typical book bookworm, not overweight, but you can't say any muscular definition either. That's, that's a stereotype. Not all bookworms. A wraparound tattoo covers her upper arms and shoulders, but from where you're standing, you can't quite make it out. She fidgets. Gradually, her eyes rise from her book and lock onto you. Welcome. Don't believe I've seen you before. The name's Crafty. Yeah, my name's The Plague. Nice to meet you. So, The Plague, what can I do for you? I've got spells, alchemical reagents, foci, whatever you want, really. Might have to do some digging to find it, but if it's magical, it's around here somewhere. You have any dreams? As a matter of fact, I have the plague, but we all get the occasional vivid dream. Nothing special there. Now what's with all these books, my friend? Sure, it's a little weird that we're having them, but these types of dreams are common in the walled city. Nothing to get all worked up about. Probably. Common, explain. Common as the cold, my mother devoted her life to researching the walled city and the magical phenomena within it. So I grew up with stories about the city, the recurrent creepy dreams being one of them. I've never been inside the walled city myself, but Mom went in pretty regularly and experienced the dreams. Um, your mom sounds interesting, I guess. Sure, she was interesting, but not praiseworthy. Um, sure. Show me your wares. Oh, look, it's all magic garbage that I'll never want or use. Ah. Ah. Hermetic fetish. I, mean, I guess these fetishes, this, uh, shamanic fetish is neat. Uh, but yeah, this is all garbage. I will never enter this shop ever again. That's how it worked in the last game as well. I went into the magic shop in, in uh, Dragonfall. A spooky elf lady was there and creeped me out, and I never went back ever again. I guess maybe I can buy stuff for Gobbit there. <sighs> I don't know. Say what? 
Oh, that was a shaman shop. So there's a separate magic shop for mages? Okay. Overhead, a gigantic hollow sign shines in the searchlight, screaming its message through the dim light. It hums and flickers, sputtering like an old engine. Fierce electrical crackles sporadically burst out of the science emitter, stabbing your eyes and filling your ears with static. Under the baleful glare of the sign, the rusty mini barge's deck is stacked with electronics. Dilapidated stereos share space with crisply boxed servers. Ranks of discs and memory chips fill display cases padlocked under plexiglass. A short human in his late twenties stands in the middle, hands on his hips, talking loudly into the air. Bulky virtual reality goggles cover his eyes. Those are clear, not virtual reality goggles. Those are augmented reality goggles. Um, a data jack cable runs from his temple down his stained T-shirt to a belt load of clearly home-built computer hardware. No, I'm telling you, nobody uses KM3s. Like nobody, they're shit. I don't care what Deng says. If Shiwase SRP uses KM3s, they're stupid. Hey, flesh is rolling up. Gotta go. I ripped that PDA. You work for kindly. I do indeed. Yo, what do you want? Um, yeah, tell me about this PDA. It was a Fuchia Zero Star 3. They use a scarab chip, which is good, but the motherboard is wet noodles and sprouts. I pulled out the trackers and installed encryption. Now it runs the Wampoa virtual network. The corpse and cops can't track it, can't track it. Uh, sweet. It's what we do. This is Law's Technology Palace, satellite territory of Wampoa. You step up on the boat, you're in a sovereign state. I represent Wampoa here. I'm Maximum Law. The Maximum Law, yo. You got a tech problem? Boom, I solve it. You need software? Boom, done. Don't, But don't waste my time. So you got any business in Wampoa right now? If not, keep moving. Uh, yeah, I do have the SimScience trip. Yo, that shit's banned. Lifted off some yellow lotus. They trafficked the stuff. Delimited sim, delimited sim chips. Full sensor experiences. You looking for a buyer? I can make it happen. How's 120 Nuyen sound? Uh, sure. I don't really care. Okay. Why are you wearing VR goggles, my dude? It's not VR, it's augmented. I knew it, I knew it. It's augmented reality. We're pioneering it. Little cameras, matrix overlay. I can support a three-dimensional HUD and sub windows with live multiple feeds. I've got a command shell open right now. I'm networked with five guys. Wave of the future. <laughs> Network with five guys, if you know what I mean. Um, wait, I have three decking? Oh, I guess I do. I hacked that thing. So why didn't I know that those were AR goggles? Come on. You can see through them. Um, sure, let's, let's just pick this one because, uh, because it requires stacking. Yeah, Shiwase, Fuchi, Renraku, a couple others. Some of us took a look at what they're doing. Their whole approach is flawed. They won't get anywhere. Yeah, that's cool. Cool story, bro. Looks like you've got some dangerous wires over there. Yo, what are you, my mother? Those wires are fine where they are, high and dry. 
They're only a problem for someone who does something stupid. I'm running a high bandwidth tech operation. Do I look like I have the time to tape copper and sip tea? No, I don't. These are the only wires you need to think about. Oh, these, these wires here. For sale. So can I just buy wires from you? Um, that's a cool hollow sign you've got. Yeah, it's pretty boss. Sure. Damn right, you're a lady who appreciates the good stuff. I like that. Half of your gets its juice from a pirate tap on a big Mitsuhama DC cable under the river. Mitsuhama's like... Oh, let's run two million volts from the cold fusion plant to the island, under the river. Those slum monkeys can't tap an underwater cable. Idiots. You know who built the tap that pulls electricity off that cable? Wampoa. You know whose barge holds the transformer? Yeah, it's mine. Cheap power for all, and a whole lot of extra for me. Behold the lighthouse of boom. Uh, okay, that's enough of that. What do you sell? We can actually afford this. And maybe we should. Oh no, I can't carry it in two drones right now at the same time. When we're stronger, we will purchase a, a deck from him. Okay. We know where he is. Later. Uh, is that guy a little bit obnoxious? Oh, there's the house sign. Laws, Techno Palace. Let's see if we can get into this medical shop. Kindly will vouch for me. Heck yeah. Let's get in there. This clinic looks like it just hosted a party. Spindly mechanical arms swing from unobtrusive wall mounts, pulling down crepe paper ribbons and scooping food platters and empty beer bottles into biohazard bags. A severely crippled Caucasian man sits in a wheelchair amidst the maelstrom of mess and robotics. He's in his 40s. Thick beard, tungsten earrings, beer belly, one cyber eye, both his legs are missing, one at the hip, the other at the knee. The man has only one arm, and only three fingers remain on his surviving hand. His face and arm show the scars of reconstructive surgery. He grins widely at you, regarding you with bloodshot eyes. He's clearly hung over. Hey man, I'm Ambrose. They call me Ten Arms. Welcome to the Kong, fellow Usaiasian. Oh, he has a loose Midwestern accent? Not anymore. A Waldo arm? What's a Waldo arm? A Waldo arm springs to life and swings over to him. Its menacing metal pincher momentarily sets a cigarette between his lips, just long enough for him to inhale from it. Kindly says you're all right. What can I do for you? Um, yeah, show me your services. Show me medical supplies. I guess this is the sort of stuff I should be buying right now. Let's buy one of each of these. Actually, no. Let's see what, uh, what, what do I have right now? Oh, I have like freaking nothing. So, yeah, let's buy a couple of med kits, I think. Yeah, that looks good. 
What type of word is available? Look at how freaking chunky this is. Why? Get out of there. Whoa, we can look at this stuff. This electro furnace room has been built as a medical clinic and a machine shop. The air is alive with the rumble of the furnaces and the hum of cooling fans. It's sweltering. The front area is more like a homey coffee house than a clinic lobby. Comfortable old furniture, used digipads, coloring books. The wall opposite the boilers is cluttered with a mixture of photos and prints. Local artist's work images, uh, local artist's work, images of military vehicles, off-road racing, Rube Goldberg machines, personal photos, Old time Chicago gangsters, the Desert Wars Motorized Combat Division. Um, sure, let's look at his personal photos. The pictures are mostly of Hioi residents, holidays, and parties. Ten armed Ambrose is in many of them. The vast scope of photos suggests that Ambrose must be acquainted with almost everyone in Hioi. The work area looks more like a machine shop than a medical theater. A roboticized operating table and a hydraulic lift supporting a partly disassembled V8 engine occupy places of both equal importance against the north and south walls. Prosthetic limbs are racked overhead like machine parts. A heavy lift hoist is clamped to an I-beam. An impressive home-built computer sits against the far wall. Several bulkier towers sit under the desk fans wearing. It looks more like a sysadmin Decker's server station than a doctor's terminal. The floors are scuffed concrete, stained with grease and old blood. The faint odors of ammonia, gasoline, and antiseptic mingle in the air. A, lot, a large sign on the back wall reads, Sanitary space, no spinning. Uh, I want the option to spit. This impressive home-built computer is running multiple large memory units and processors. Chilled air from its active cooling system washes across you, to the whir fans. A thin fiber optic cable runs across the floor, the floor to Ambrose in his chair. On the wall behind the computer are miscellaneous decorations, notes, and photos. Two items stand out, a large dry erase calendar and a cork, bar, a cork board plastered with printouts. News clippings and BBS posts have been printed, carefully snipped, and pinned in place. How, like, retro? Most are less than a year old. They're intermixed with grainy photographs of what looks like a devastated city, Chicago. The news articles describe an outbreak of a virulent version of the Vitus Vitas, Vitas? plague in the city, and the subsequent quarantine of a zone containing hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of people. Seeing this just makes me think of, um, what is it called, Seventh Day? That Vitas song with the... Oh, what the heck, come on. Seventh Element, Seventh Element, yeah. The newest items are plain text to bulletin board postings printed out. They're very fair. Th the, the very fact that they're from so crude a site is strange. Very, very few Matrix sites are so plain. Oh, okay. I do not have academic. Parson. The postings are from a simple bulletin board system, such as would usually be used only when bandwidth is at a premium or data has to be sent long distances, like thousands of kilometers. You can pick out some recurring statements that seem to refer to the venue, the BBS, Shadowland. The primary moderator looks like someone named Captain Chaos. 
These postings are probably from the North American Dark Matrix site that operates out of the Denver data haven, the so-called Shadowland. The Shadowland, supposedly the global mothership of, of Matrix havens for runners. Uh, files smuggled out from within the containment zone that describe a cover-up, the detonation of a small nuclear weapon, and the catastrophic release of insect spirits into the city. Okay, so that's Shadowrun Returns. Oh, well that sucks. Look at the calendar. The dry erase calendar is cluttered with a relentless storm of commitments written in cramped, sloppy Hanzi. Most appear to be medical appointments with patients, followed by a busy lift list of social engagements. Closer scrutiny reveals others. A basic mechanics class on Wednesday nights. Basic computer coding Sunday afternoons. Before both of these, inked in red marker is prepare lesson plan, you stupid idiot. Holidays. Big combat auto races. Birthdays. Every Sunday until 4 p.m. is simply labeled engine. Only five hours a night are allocated to sleep, but large swaths of time are conspicuously labeled hangover. So wait, is this a dry race calendar or is it like a day planner? Like how, what do you mean hours allocated? Like how am I looking at this year's calendar being like, he only allocates five hours to sleep for every night. Like this, this sounds like his day planner and not not a calendar. Like a dry race calendar? Large enough that like every day you can put all the like split out of how many hours and, and when you're doing things? That doesn't make sense to me. I don't think we get into this club yet. Well, I guess so. out here for a bit. I wish I could dance. I wish anyone was dancing. What the hell? Why does it look so lame in here? Oh. This is the weapons cellar. Can I help you? I'm usually beyond helping, but what can you offer? I can offer you guns or a swift kick out the door if you mess with me or mine. This is my family's place, me, my husband, and our two boys. Now do you have business with me? I have no time for window shoppers. I've got firearms from all over the world, from Aries to Walther and everything in between. You in the market? possible, even though I have no uh, inventory space to hold any weapons. Oh, we could get a grenade though. Yeah, half the space. Let's bring some AP grenades with us. Oh, I'm not gonna be good at throwing them, will I? Well, whatever. They're mine now. Can I actually buy anything at the bar?
It is cool. Welcome to Club 88. No killing, no fighting, no sex trade. Uh, sweet. I'm Henry Cup 5. I suppose I own this place. If you're looking for guns, speak to my wife. If you're looking for pharma, speak to my son, Callum. And if you're looking for trouble, you'll be seeing my son, Frederick, briefly. And what do you do, Henry? Nothing, I just steer the ship. And I'm an idiot, watch it. There's always a ship. Sure. Callum. So where the heck's this magic shop? Well, this guy isn't the magic shop. Despite the wind and rain pelting here, the proprietor of this stall, a monk, judging by their outfit, is, un is unconcerned. The monk's expression is indifferent, though hardly placid or serene. Muscles show as tightly wound metal bands beneath the skin, ready to snap in any direction without warning. What's more, the monk's robes are anything but ordinary. Certainly, silk makes up the base outfit, but it's paired with high-impact ballistic armor heavy-duty boots, and a bandolier of throwing knives. The table in front of you is arrayed with a wide variety of melee weapons, charms, jade pendants, and other mystical accoutrements. Beneath an awning in the rear are rows upon rows of cages, each housing some variety of exotic reptile or insect. These, in turn, are flanked by jars and boxes of Chinese herbs, incense, powders, and inks. The monk spares you only the shortest of glances as you approach. I am Monk Shen. Most people in Hyoi call me Spider Shen on account of the spiders back there. You're not local, not by a long shot. Oh, wait. One sec. That looks like Ace is streaming. I have to go say hi. You probably have more reason to buy something than my neighbors, and I'm here to sell, so that's good. Swords, knives, clubs, I sell it all. I make most of these, but if I can't, I've got friends who can. If you need incense or salves for meditation, I make and sell those too. And if you're joint's sake, I can give you acupuncture. So what can I show you? Yeah, I'd love a snake or spider. <laughs> no, they're mine. I can sell you all the things I craft with my hands, or the things I can do, but the medicines and poisons I make are my secret. You want those, you apprentice to me. In five years, maybe I'll show you how to make a poultice, eh? They're that secret? Of course they're secret. These are what set me apart from the rest of the street dealers in Hyoi. You want cram or bliss? Any two-bit triad punk can make that for you. But I can realign your key, set your yin and yang in balance, or set somebody else's out of balance with a few drops. To master my skills, you need to learn for years. It's not just following a formula. You want to learn? You need patience. You try to learn without patience. All you do is ape the masters. You have to understand them to truly learn my art. Otherwise, you never become a master. 
Might as well get a skill soft. Yeah, show me your weps. Oh, it's, it's stuff I won't get. I do miss being a fiscal adept, I will say that. Oh well. That's all. I will probably never shop with you again either. What a magic shop be. What is this? We'll deal with it later. Okay, let's go finally look at our mission computer. I guess. Your workstation and mission computer. The cool blue tones of the workstation's main menu fills the screen. A blinking message in the upper right corner notifies you you have six unread messages. Do we have any pay -to? No. Missed connections. You, rappelling down the side of an unnamed luxury hotel in a ball gown on Monday night. Me, admiring the view from the 28th floor urinals during a private soiree for an unnamed corporation I was infiltrating. Interesting. Our eyes met briefly before you dropped out of sight. Your long, dark hair had come loose from a... From your what the hell is that? Framing your beautiful, flushed face. I will never forget it. You're carrying a duffel bag bulging with stolen prototype weaponry. Well, I, fitch, I filched the intel that goes with it. Can we connect? Oh. Very funny, Blackjack. I'm sorry the job went sideways. I got trapped and only had one way out. We were supposed to have each other's backs. Just wait till you hear the way out I had to take. We've got to lay low for now. And why are we posting about this on public message board? Alrighty, yeah, that's true. Inbox, welcome to Hioi. The Plague. On behalf of your friends at the Hioi Chamber of Commerce and the Swift Winds Mahjong Parlor, I welcome you to the community of Hioi and our new business adventure. I have already lined up three jobs for you. The details of each are contained in a separate computer message. Remember to check your messages often, as I will update you with new opportunities as they occur. Hey, The Plague. I've set up your mission computer to automatically collect and collate news reports, information, and media that might be of interest to you. Some of the wor words I've got it trolling for are things like Raymond, Duncan, Walled City, etc. I've also patched in a permanent link up to the Hong Kong shard of the Shadowland VPS. It's a great place to connect with other runners, sell pay data, get news from the street, and so on. Don't be shy about taking a look. What is this? Is this Strangler Bow? I have been instructed to inform you of the various suppliers present in Hyoi. Auntie Cheng has cultivated a commercial district of well-stocked and trustworthy vendors. Whoever you choose to do business with, you'll be in good hands. 
Ermine Kaifai Kafa at the Club 88 is an excellent resource for acquiring additional weapons should you require any. If you're in need of magical supplies, go to the Parlor of Five Phases. If you desire training in the path of the adept, seek out Spider Shen. She can help you, as well as supply you with any close quarters weapons you might desire. Chrome Alley can supply you with cybernetic enhancements and medical supplies. The proprietor, Ten Armed Ambrose, is a cyber surgeon of some repute. Law's Techno Palace is a Wampoan run supplier of the local decking community. The place is hard to miss, just look for a sign glowing in the sky. If you need drones, reliable Matthews Robot Bazaar is your best, best bet, and I pity you. Best of luck in the shadows, as fresh meat you're likely to need it. So these are our three jobs. I've got a problem with the plague, and you're going to help me solve it. I do a lot of business with the Wampoans. If you're not familiar with the term, I forgive you. You're an outsider after all. The Wampoans are a tribe of techno-fetishists and deckers who've taken up residence in the Wampoa Garden area of Hong Kong. They make and trade high-tech goods to people from all over the world. A lot of Nuyen passes through their pasty little fingers, and I make a lot of money brokering deals between them and the smugglers here in Hioi. I've hit a snag, though. The Wampoan elders, their council of leaders, are being eliminated by a serial killer. They've asked me to dispatch someone to get to the bottom of it and stop the killings, and they're not taking their goods through my turf until I do. So you're going to be my proxy, dear. I don't care how you do it, but I need those murders stopped. The Wampoans have delegates here in Hioi by the name of have a delegate here in Hioi by the name of Maximum Law. Speak with him if you wish to know about Wampoa. He's got a big mouth, but he knows very little of he knows very little of importance. Don't expect much from that half empty bottle of vinegar. You get your ass down to Wampoa Garden and talk to the elders. Lie, cheat, and steal if you have to, as long as they're convinced that there won't be any more murders. I want my cup back, and I want it soon. Okay, that sounds cool. Welcome to the Shadows, the Plague. I've received a request from an archaeolo archaeologist named Mr. Drake. He is interested in liberating certain artifacts from beneath a manor house located in Taipo. I've attached a copy of the video message he sent me. Hello, Madam Chang. I've heard you're a woman who knows how to get things done, especially with regards to things that aren't legal in the strictest sense. That's exactly the kind of help I'm looking for. Recently, a rich investor by the name of Lu... Liu... Liu... Liu Hua decided to expand his manor house on the outskirts of Tai Po. Too much money, not enough space for fancy parties. He hit a snag with the local government officials, however. They suspected the land his estate was built on may have pre-modern archaeological artifacts buried beneath it. All of them dating from the Song Dynasty. Consequently, it was contracted... I was contracted as an archaeologist to oversee the excavations and ensure everything was properly recorded and cataloged. Sure enough, we were only a few days into the excavation when we discovered a series of tombs lying beneath the site. The scope of the tombs was far beyond anything Liu or I had expected. Several acres of catacombs, at least, and untouched relics throughout. What's more, they're certainly older than the Song Dynasty. They may even be from the previous cycle of magic. Before I could make my report to the Free Enterprise Zone authorities, however, Lu called in his allies in Tan Tian Incorporated. Lu sold the entire site to Tan Tian, who then leased it back to him. Because Tan Tian is considered to have extra territoriality in Hong Kong, local authorities were powerless to stop Lu from looting the tombs. He immediately began building a museum, if you can call it that, atop the site. He had the gall to call his museum the Emperor's Tomb. Can you believe that? The odds of there being an actual Emperor buried there are basically nil, but he doesn't care. Anything to sell a few tickets.
Yankees continued his excavations using Tontian contractors to expand the dig. What he didn't know is that I bugged his comlink before he fired me. Based on what I've heard, something strange is going on in the lower levels. Workers have been disappearing, only to be found dead several days later. Whatever is down there is too dangerous to be left in Lou's hands. Lou must have found my data line tapped, though. I stopped receiving any information three days ago. The last thing I heard him talking about were a pair of ancient texts that workers had discovered. Then he issued an order that further excavation should be halted until he can secure the subterranean areas. I'm betting those texts are the cause of whatever's killing the workers. I have quite a bit of experience with these kinds of dangerous excavations, but an operation of this scale is beyond me. I need a team that's tough enough to get in and survive, who aren't afraid of making a mess, and who can get, a, get out with the books and whatever else they can carry. Beyond the two texts, I'm willing to pay very well for whatever other artifacts your team can liberate. The more valuable, the better. Don't worry, they'll be going to actual museums, not some rich playboy's mansion. I've got a second program in place that'll suppress Lou's security system. The team will have to be careful, though. There are only so many alarms I can suppress. Go beyond that number, and I'll scrub the mission. I've included a catalog of likely items to help the team appraise the most valuable ones. They don't need to be subtle, in fact. I'd prefer they make it look like a common robbery. Tell them to smash and grab what they can. Let me know when you find a suitable group of Shadowrunners. Whew. There you have it. A nice, simple robbery. You can handle something that basic, dear. I have faith in you. Let me know when you're ready to proceed. I'll contact Mr. Drake. Well, that sounds fun. I like the stealthy aspect. Geomancy is big business in the free enterprise zone. Here in Hong Kong, Feng Shui isn't the act of rearranging your kitchen to make things look pretty. The fortunes of empires rise and fall with the ebb and flow of key. And sometimes... That flow needs a helping hand. <laughs> Wuxing Incorporated are the preeminent practitioners of large-scale key manipulation here in the free enterprise zone. They've gone to great lengths to channel key from all over Hong Kong into their headquarters, an enormous monstrosity they call the Wuxing Sky Tower. There it is focused and transforms into good fortune through the building's geomantically attuned architecture and interior decoration. Our client believes that it's time for Wuxing's good luck to run out. You are to infiltrate the Sky Tower and disrupt the flow of key throughout the building. You are to do so in two distinct fashions. First, you must disrupt the feng shui of the offices by subtly altering the environment of that level. This will consist of minor adjustments to desks, spilled water, and other small activities that are unlikely to be noticed. Ordinarily, even subtle disturbances of this nature would be noticed. This is why the client wishes you to make a much louder demonstration on the rooftop garden. The garden is to be ransacked, utterly destroyed, set fire to things, uproot trees, that kind of thing. Our client has also specified he would like you to destroy the large Buddha statue in the garden, smash the thing to bits, and leave them scattered across the rooftop. This level of destruction will keep Wuxing's geomancers busy long enough that the more subtle disruptions below will take effect. In addition, it will send the kind of message our client would like Wuxing to hear. I have utmost faith in your ability to cause destruction. The more disruption you can cause on both levels of the Sky Tower, the happier the client will be. As you're not a spellcaster yourself, it may be wise to bring Gobbit along. She'll be able to see the most effective ways to disrupt the key of the building. Uh, let's go to Wampoa. Oh no, serial killer. Take it. Good, I'll tell the elders you're coming. They don't like outsiders, and they might shoot at you if I don't warn them you'll be arriving. Sweet. Oh, 
actually can't talk through of my crew. Oh, okay, we haven't been down here. Let's talk to Rector. I guess he's renting this place. It's oppressively hot down here, and the air is full of synthetic odors that grab you by the sinuses and refuse to let go. You can smell engine grease and melting plastic, ionized air and lead solder. A quick scan of the room tells you why. The downstairs tenant has converted the space into a machine shop. Metal fabrication tools and duraplastic extruders line the walls, and a pair of heavy industrial manipulators hang from the ceiling. A man in a black trench coat stands with his back to you, staring at a monitor mounted above a sturdy workbench. He addresses you without turning. Ah, uh, I was wondering when I'd meet the new neighbor. His voice is pleasant, cultured. There's a hint of a Russian accent there, but it's buried under layers of nuance. Please, stay where you are. I'll be with you in just a moment. Unless you fancy an unplanned trip to Chrome Alley. Don't touch anything. There are all manner of tools in here that could take your hand clean off. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for the warning. Don't mention it. I have no interest in seeing anyone hurt in my shop, especially not my upstairs neighbor. Yeah, let's look at the screen. The feed on the monitor looks like some sort of design software. You can see what appears to be a slim, spidery appendage in the orthographic and perspective views. Ah, uh, very good, yes. That's coming along nicely. Very nicely, indeed. So sorry to have kept you waiting, miss. The plague. <laughs> You're too kind. Now tell me, what can I do for... His voice trails off as a flash of motion catches his eye. With alarming speed, a sinister-looking drone scuttles out from under the work table. Its movements are surprisingly agile and fluid. The machine rears back menacingly, spreading its forelegs in a clear sign of aggression. The man's smile tilts and his tone goes apologetic. Please, don't mind the drone. He can be territorial, but so long as you remain civil, he won't bite. Ractor. My mechanical counterpart here is Koshche. A pleasure. I'm very pleased to meet you, my friend. In a community such as Hyoi, it's important to be on good terms with one's neighbors. want to ask you some questions. Very well. This morning's casting should be still cooling for a few minutes yet. That's time enough to talk. Got some interesting machinery. The same could be said of many in Hyoi, I'm sure. This is a smuggler's den, is it not? Our entire economy is based on people having things they shouldn't. Is there a particular device that interests you, out of curiosity? Most interested in that drone. Koshche. Ah, but my friend, you're wrong. You'll never find his like in any corporate factory or lab. He's mine, my own creation, from the top of his sensor cluster to the tips of his claws. I designed him, fabricated his components, and built him by hand. Impressive. No more so than anyone else who follows his passions and perfects his craft. Uh, it's a cool name for the drone. Interesting, I guess, name. 
Yes, I suppose that it is. Not many riggers would name their most prized possession after a villain from a fairy tale. A nod to my heritage, I suppose. Uh, too bad I don't have academic. Oh, a thoroughly unpleasant person. Koshchei the Deathless, he was called, and for good reason. His soul was cleverly hidden outside of his body, and he could not be killed so long as it remained intact. So he had a phylactery. Koshchei was a villain, and a notorious kidnapper of women, but something about him always stuck with me. I suppose there was the notion of immortality through cleverness that resonated. There was something to be learned from that, I was sure. And so, when it came time to name my beloved creation, his was the first name that came to mind. Uh, I mean, to some degree, a drone is deathless. This feels stupid. In a manner of speaking, I suppose that he is. I have redundant copies of every piece of his architecture, and his core programming is stored on disk in a secret location. Should he ever suffer critical damage, I can easily bring him back. I had a plan once to automate the self-repair process. I must confess, it was really quite ingenious. But alas, my research was lost. One day, I will reclaim it, and Koshche will become as deathless as the stories claim. But it will not be today. Yeah, later, later, bro. I'm gonna open this door, though. Ugh. Is that where you sleep? Let's go talk to people. Oh yeah, we can change out our, um, trauma kit. Boop. In fact, we could do that. Talk to Dunk later. Isabel's cabin is an exercise in controlled chaos. Her living space is utterly dominated by an enormous jury rigged computer. Serpentine cables snake from component to component, tying dozens of obsolete terminals and cyberdecks together into a single colossal machine. This, um, this is my personal machine. If you're looking for your mission computer, it's downstairs. She doesn't bother looking up, but you can see that she is elbow deep in the guts of an obsolete cyber deck, one of a half dozen that have been wired into her computer with braided cables. Hey, yeah, you got a second? <sighs> We're talking now, aren't we? Now I can ask you a few questions. Go ahead. I'm not stopping you. Yeah, have you had any weird dreams? Well, yeah, I think everybody has. Me too. I know, it happens more often than you'd think. This kind of mass psychosis was common where I grew up. Everybody got it. Wow, okay. You've been sharing bad dreams with others since you were a kid? Yeah, in the walled city, just one of many amenities in life in that hellhole. But this, having happened outside of the slum, this is new. I don't know what's causing it. I don't think I want to. It's quite a machine. She's my pet project. I call her the octopus. You might be able to guess why. It's impressive. She's a monster. An absolute beast. What's it 
made of. Whatever I could find. Busted terminals, obsolete cyber decks, aftermarket memory from Maximum Law's dumpster. Scavengers would kill for this stuff in the Wad City, but out here, people throw it away. Most deckers are early adopters. They buy whatever's newest to shell out huge amounts of dune in hopes of riding the bleeding edge. It's stupid. It's an arms race. They do what's easy, throw money at the problem. Amateurs. For a quarter of the price of that whiz new cyber deck, I can have five of last year's model, and after I've finished daisy chaining them together, the machine I've built will run circles around your store bought wonder. Uh, sure. Can you teach me? <laughs> Got a couple of years to sit here and learn? I can give you tips here and there to play, but really learning how to do this takes time that we don't have time and desperation and need to make do with what you've got. And what about your portable rig? It gets the job done. Might not be top of the line, but I'm comfortable using it in the field. If you should happen to come across any more advanced hardware or software, either on the job or on the discount rack at Law's Techno Palace, I'm not above taking donations. But barring that, I'm fine using what I've got. Your call. Okay. So we can upgrade our gear. What about you, Gob? Goblin Gob. Gobbit's nest is pretty much what you'd expect. Piles of clothes on the ground and overflowing garbage bins surrounded by stacks of instant noodle packets and towers of tinned oysters. Avant-garde posters haphazardly thumbtacked to the walls, overlapping in some places and peeling in others. It feels a lot like an art school dorm room. Gobbit reclines in a corner, cradling a bowl of soup in her hands. At her feet, a cast iron pot simmers away on an electric hot plate. The contents are typical Hong Kong comfort food. Chicken-style soya broth, elbow macaroni, tinned ham, and a helping, a heaping scoop of egg-flavored mycoprotein. As you wind your way through the piles of dirty laundry, Gobbit slowly lifts her head from her bowl to acknowledge you. Hey, Seattle. How's tricks? Things have been better, things have been worse. <laughs> That's the attitude. Very stoic, very strong. It's downright inspiring. Then you want to tell me what you're doing in my bedroom. I'm assuming you're not here to admire the view. Had any nightmares recently? Yeah, yeah I have. We all have. Everyone in town. Everyone, huh? Does not strike you as odd. Sure does. But then, lots of odd stuff happens in Hioi. In case you hadn't gotten the memo, we aren't in the best part of town. In all seriousness, the dreams are coming from inside the walled city. I'm pretty sure of that. All the negative energy pent up is in there. All that pain and anger and poisonous key is leaking out. And while we sleep, it's getting into us. I think it's a magical phenomena then. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. While well, my personal opinion, the walled city is cursed. Deep down, I think everybody knows it, and we live in its shadow. It's bound to mess with your head, you know. And it is. But they're just dreams. It's not like they can hurt us, right? Who says they can't? <laughs> Don't worry, Seattle. We're fine here. But, um, let's talk about something else. I don't like thinking about the walled city very much. Too many old fears and bad feelings. Yeah, what's with the name? 
Oh, that's her actual name? A gobbit is a wad of meat? I didn't know that. Yeah, that's that's your, your real name? Nah, not really. I'm sinless. There's no electronic record of a girl named Gobbit even existing. The only thing that could really threaten me would be, say, the HKPF attaching an APB to whatever file they do have on me. That would be terrifying. Sorry. <sighs> it is what it is. Yeah, let me talk to you about the ambush. <sighs> yeah, I figured you'd want to talk about that. It was a hell of a thing, right? A clusterfuck of epic proportions. Nightjar and Gutshot were two of the strongest men I've ever known. Quality shadow runners, both of them. I've watched those two fight through situations that'd kill anyone and come out on top. And how'd they go out? Bang, bang. Dead, dead. No blaze of glory, no final speech, just extinguished, smashed like bugs. Would have all gone the same way if you hadn't gotten us out of there. Uh, it was more rat than me. She's the one who grabbed me by the gut and led us to that sewer entrance. All I did was follow. Now, what kind of totem is a rat? A clever one. She's gotten me out of more trouble than I care to mention. Gotten me into a fair amount of it, too. But I can always count on her to lead me out of hot water when I need her to. I can feel it in my belly, you know. Sort of a tugging sensation. I've long since learned to follow it. Yeah, this is pretty direct. Usually they don't. Me and rat... We've a sort of special bond. She takes care of me, and I've always done my best to take care of her. Aww, oh, the rats. I love the rats. And to pamper her earthly children like these two, meet madness and folly. Madness and folly. Interesting. I like the way the sound, madness, madness, and folly. It has a nice ring to it, right? My girls remind me not to take myself too seriously. I wouldn't trust folly, though. She bites. How'd you come across them? I looked outside. I mean, they're rats. Hong Kong isn't experiencing a rodent shortage or anything. So you just scoop them up off the street. Yep, think of them as rescue room, and you could probably do the same if you wanted to. It's easy. Just walk into any alleyway in Kowloon after sundown and stick your hand in the first dumpster storm drain you come across. Keep fishing around till you touch fur. I might just have to try it. Uh, you probably shouldn't. Odds are about 50 50 that you'd get your hand chewed off. I'd probably feel bad about that. Cool. Yeah, I don't even want to talk to Duncan. Let's do it, though. Lou's cabinet appears to be the only clean spot on the bolt hole. His equipment is neatly laid out on his bedding, grouped by type, and arranged just so. He's currently in the process of cleaning his weapon with meticulous care. One second. One second. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that, I guess. We're runners now. Uh, I think it's time to catch up. Could be. That's why I'm maintaining my equipment. 
It helps me focus my brain, work through stuff. That was a good time as any, I guess. Where do you want to start? Um. Yeah, tell me about your dream. Yeah, yours sounded like a nasty one. I don't remember much about mine. I was pretty creeped out by our run into the walled city. Between that and all the drama, I'd be surprised if I didn't have a nightmare. Um, was the walled... S what do you remember? Just little snatches of things. The walled city was breathing, and it had teeth everywhere. And there was a tunnel that was so bright I had to shut my eyes. And Raymond was there. He was either kneeling or lying down. I can't remember which. But he was crying. That's what made me wake up. The sound of my father crying. They feel different. <sighs> you know how sometimes you'll be mad at a friend in a dream and then wake up still mad at him? When you treat him like he did something wrong when you see him. It kind of feels like that to me. Like I, I dreamed I was swimming towards a bright light. And when I woke up, I was out of breath from the effort. Sure. Let's talk later. Let's just go on our run. I guess we'll hopefully get to pick the whole gang. Yeah, let's go to one pole guard. The MTR. The, the mass transit railway. Maybe? What is that? In addition to your team, your fixer has access to a small network of mercenaries in the Kowloon area. These runners appear below your core team on the mission runners on, on the runner selection screen and can be hired on a mission to mission basis. As you complete missions, both your team members and the available mercenaries will periodically gain access to new equipment and abilities. Any new items, spells, weapons, or weapon abilities that a runner gains will automatically be available for use the next time you take them on a mission. X flow. I am a physical magician. Illuminati. Yes. Yeah, let's just stay with our crew. Wampoa Garden, a carnival of chrome and neon, rife with every manner of technology and artifice one can imagine. The entire area has the feel of a night market, save that chips are sold in lieu of steam buns, and vendors hawk the latest drones rather than folk art. Something stalks these streets, hiding just out of sight. It stalks the Wampoan elders, the leaders of this band of tech-savvy squatters that have claimed the neighborhood as their own. The streets smell of ozone and fear, and those Wampoans you pass in the MTR station have a haunted, furtive look in their eye. While the killer has struck only at the elders thus far, it will only be a matter of time before ordinary residents are menaced as well. Um, yeah, I'm good for that. Should probably sell the old stuff that weren't going to use. Oh, I've I've got karma. Well, 
take a look at that. of Wampoa Garden are slick with rain, glittering under the neon glow of myriad signs and holographic displays. The sky reflects the same glow, painting the white apartment blocks the sickly orange of sodium streetlights. The smell of grilling meat mingles with each other, with other rarer scents, ozone, engine oil, and high-tech fabrication facilities. Despite the hour, there are plenty of people out and about. You can hear the calls of street vendors and touts urging people into their stores. Is there a word for feeling nostalgic for a place you can't wait to leave again? I don't miss this place, but I miss the feelings I had when I lived here. The sodded? Sodded. Uh, sure. Let's just try this random word I've never heard of. No, that's not it. It's close, but... Is that a real word? What does that mean? Let me look it up. Sodata. Sodata. Oh, okay. A feeling of longing, melancholy, or nostalgia that is supposedly characteristic of the Portuguese or Brazilian temperament. Saudade. Okay, that's interesting information. This place seemed like heaven after the Watt City, like the whole world had unfurled in front of me, and then anywhere I turned there was the promise of a good life. Turned out this place was just as crappy for everywhere else. Everyone was still in it for themselves. Oh, it's a great life. Listen, it is. I'm serious. At the end of the day, life's a raw deal. And you've got yourself and a handful of friends, and that's it. Nothing else. You've got some strange ideas about life, sure. Their life's a meat grinder. But come on. There's got to be more life than just surviving. Does there? What makes you the authority on that? I'm done talking about this. Anyway. We're looking for the Wampoa elders. They're going to be in the Wam in the Wampoa itself. That's the big ship down the street. Yeah, that's the one. Kinda hard to miss. It's been a fixture since the last century. These days it's just a squat. Shops are family affairs, not corporate ones. I also need to know. They're all tech heads, tinkerers, and self-taught. Self-taught scientists. Despite the fact that there's no formal education system, everyone here is pretty smart. They're, they apprentice kids to skilled workers so they can learn a trade. Elder Gao taught me decking, and I left after she got brain fried trying to crack a Mitsuhama network. Elder Eep taught me to shoot. He should still be here. Come on, let's go see what they have to say for themselves. I heard he's not just dead, he's been all cut up. I don't know, I just don't feel safe here anymore. You better find some place indoors to sleep, Yon. The streets are dangerous. Oh, 
Okay, I guess we go to the boat. The Wampoa. Whoa. I'm just looking around, don't mind me. And there's a cool place. Guest 29. A little shopping center. Elder Ng. This orc woman is festooned with small circuits, tiny, tiny trid screens, and speakers. The trid screens display snippets of trid broadcasts from every corner of the world. The tiny speakers play counterpoint with a, uh, with a susurus of voices speaking Spirithial, Punjabi, Kazakh, and other languages. Her expression is haggard, and she fidget, fidgets with her fingers as you approach. Welcome, welcome to the Wampoa, my friend. I am Elder Ng. Mm. And these are the Elders Tang and Eep. Thank you so much for answering our request for help. We had nowhere else to turn. It's the least I could do. Oh, under Tang's skin, glowing tattoos writhe and change shape. Tigers become cranes and move on to dragons. We are under threat one by one. We elders are being hunted by some monster. As you may have noticed when you arrived, there's been another killing just tonight. Ah, the prodigal daughter returned once more. I didn't expect to see you back aboard the Wampoa in my lifetime, Isabel. When you disappeared, Elder Yatunde was very put out. I'm glad you're still alive. When you chose to walk your own path, I was disappointed, but I still understood why you had to leave. I hope my lessons have helped you prosper. I didn't expect to be back either. Work takes you places, though. I don't cart this around for fun, Eat. The lessons kept me alive. Where is Yutunde, anyways? I expected her to be here. She's dead, so are Gan and Nakamura, and Tong was killed just tonight. So much blood, you have to stop this from continuing. Uh, that's... that's what we're here for. We'll stop the killings. Th thank you, Isabel. Um... Yeah, what do elders do? They make the rules, and they kick people out who don't obey them. They're a bunch of petty tyrants, that's what. Is she saying that right in front of them? You're being unfair, Isabel. Our laws are for the good of the community. We keep the Wampoa and its residents safe. We review trade agreements with outsiders to see if they're good for the community. We provide a guiding vis vision, like a town council. You people are weird. Our ways may seem strange to you, but they have sustained us for many years. I do not expect you to understand. I am the invoker of sprites. I commune with the spirits of machines. Ask them for blessings and pass those blessings on to the people here. I heal the sick and ensure the feng shui of our habitat is as good as it can be given our confines. She's a shaman, that's all. She's just got some kooky spin on it. Claims her totem is some kind of all-encompassing machine god that lives in the circuitry. <sighs> Ancient gods and ancestors are one thing. My deck, it's mine. I built it. The only spirits it's got in it are the ESPs I loaded up with. Just because you cannot see or touch a thing does not mean it does not exist. Just because you do not believe in it does not mean it does not protect you from afar. I can't 
can't touch programs either, but at least I can prove they have an effect on the physical world. Your superstitions are just that. Bullshit. This guy treats drones like they're living things. Is that right? I am the first and glorious servo. I study patterns, repair machinery, and teach others how to attune themselves to the wonders of automation. The blessed Autofab is my shop and purview, where we make the drones we use and sell. As for me, I serve as the resplendent voltage spike. That means I shoot people who try to screw with us. It's a fancy title for head of security. Um, jeez. Um. Let's see. Now, what can you tell me? They started two weeks ago. The first to go was gone. We found him in his apartment, eviscerated. He'd been torn apart. His head been, had been ripped completely off, and most of his skin flayed away. There was so much blood, it took us a week to clean out his apartment. And the rest have been the same. Always at night. Always dismembered. Each scene is like a nightmare. And every time, nobody has seen anything. It's like a ghost. What happened to Tong? The same that happened to the rest of the victims. Evisceration. Dismemberment. We sent a guard to keep people out of his shop. But he'll let you in. When did he die? Sometime early tonight, he'd locked up his shop, but Eep stopped by to ask him about some skill chips he had. The door was unlocked, and inside... Inside looked like a bad horror sim, just like all the other murders. It had to have happened after sundown, because I saw his shop was open when I was on my way to get some noodles for dinner. Why didn't you call the police? The Hong Kong police force isn't welcome here. They've tried to force us out several times before. Or come hunting for someone to put a, to pin a crime on. We do a lot of favors for local gangs and triads. Handle their matrix security. Fix up their gear and make sure they have access to the Hong Kong Shadowlands hub. We are too valuable a resource for them to lose, so they protect us when the HKPF or anyone else decides we're an easy target. They handle our physical security, and we make sure to send the message via the Matrix. The last time the HKPF made trouble, we started airing the Assistant Chief's dirty laundry all over the Trid. They got the picture and backed off. Um, so besides the HKPF, has you, have you made any enemies recently? No, not that I can think of. We keep to ourselves. We buy and sell technology. We're not mercenaries or criminals. We're merchants and deckers. And even if someone was cheated in a, in a deal, this kind of response is unthinkable. Whatever did this, it wasn't human. The violence and savagery. It's a monster, whatever it is. Plenty of meta-humans are monsters, too. Mm -hmm. Just because it's horrible doesn't mean it's supernatural. Yeah, that's all. It might be wise to ask the residents of Wampoa Garden if they've seen or heard anything. After you've gone to Tong's Sensory Carnival, they may have seen or heard things we have not. Sensory Carnival? Nope, no else wants to talk to me. Let's go up. So where, where is the shop? Over here, maybe? Can I talk to 
talk to... Nope. Uh, so there should be a guard in front of the... Oh, this guy, right? Obviously. No. Huh. Oh, I guess this is the shop. Tongs, Sensory Carnival. Oh, look at the happy face. Another bird in a cage. Why? What? What is this for? I don't understand. Why would you have, like, this outdoors with a bird trapped in a cage? Portal Lamb. Portal Lamb at your service. The elders told me you'd be coming. They tell you about what happened to Tong? Just the basics. Well, nothing's basic about it. I've seen people shot, stabbed, beaten to death. Hell, I've even seen a corpse that was so dry and desiccated, I could have sworn a vampire got to it. None of that's got anything on this. Brace yourself and go on in. Tong's Sensory Carnival looks like the, a scene out of a B-grade slasher sim. The cloying scent of incense hangs thick and pungent in the air, emanating from the small shrine in the corner of the shop. Unfortunately, it does nothing to cover up the reek of death and clotted blood. Despite the ragged remnants of Elder Tong littering the floor, the rest of the shop appears to be in good order, at least at first glance. Nothing is broken, tipped over, or otherwise ransacked. As you're about to step further into the room, you glance at the ceiling and walls. The blood from Tong's body isn't just confined to where his remains lie. Drying blood is spread about the walls and ceiling as well. Was Ichi the killer here? Hope this is not Chris's blood. Uh, so sure. Let's look at the body. Tong's body is a ruined mess. The destroyed ruin of his face is barely recognizable. And what is left of his body would be best described as savaged. All of his limbs have been torn off, and a pile of flayed skin lies next to the remnants of the Wampoan elder. The Wampoan's clothing has all but been reduced to rags and tissue by cuts and tears, apparently sustained during the flaying. At this point, the only thing holding what's left of his body into a semblance of human form is the hair-thin fiber optics of his cyberware. Sweet heaven, the plague. I haven't seen anything like that since Auntie Wong tried to stash some cred sticks in a devil rat's nest. It takes a lot to turn my stomach, but we have a winner today. This is seriously messed up. I'll second that. This isn't a murder. This is more like, I don't know, a feeding frenzy. If it weren't for the skin, I'd say Tong stepped on a goddamn mine or something. Uh, Gobbit, a sense the body. You're the boss, boss. Ugh, this is going to be unpleasant. There's no fear here, the plague. No anger either. Just this kind of satisfied feeling. Tong never saw it coming, and whoever did it was professional about it. Which is pretty odd because nobody's professional about eviscerating a body, as far as I know. Hmm. You think it was a hit? I don't know why the killer was after Tong. 
but it definitely wasn't any kind of mindless creature, or even someone particularly passionate. It was somebody who planned this and executed it, and was glad about it. I don't know, it kind of feels like it was just business as usual. The walls are covered in splattered and smeared blood, most of which has hardened into a crusty, congealed paste. Thick tracks of it run laterally. It looks like the blood has been deliberately smeared. A hey, uh, plague? I don't, I don't know a whole lot about science or all that, but I know what blood looks like when it hits a wall. This, this isn't natural. Somebody deliberately smeared blood all over these walls. See how it looks like it's got big paint trails? It's because somebody used Tong's parts like a brush. But why? Do I look like a psychologist to you? Maybe because they're a freak. Maybe because they're one of those sick serial killers that sees their murders as art. I got no clue. All I know is what normal blood looks like on a wall, and this ain't it. Some people have a bad grasp of art. I knew this guy in Kwantung who used to make music out of stray radio static and panic button calls. He called it Crisis Wave. It was awful. I'd love to hear this, actually. So much to look at. Let's look in the bathroom. Tong's bathroom is immaculate and drains are tiny. Whatever killed him didn't exit through here. The safe. Tong's desk drawers are open, and the safe that's built into one side has been opened. There's no sign of tampering, and the green light next to the word unlocked is blinking. Whoever opened the safe did it with a key fob. Inside are several blank cred sticks, but no sign of any with money on them. Looks like someone looted his stash. A guy like this would known to keep empty cred sticks in his safe. This is a Yamaha 9505 SimSynth, a device for mixing and mastering SimSense chips. Several drive bays are empty, and all of the chip jacks are empty. The screen is flashing a repeated error message. Warning, requested files cannot be found. Please return drives to drive bay and try again. Let's try and debug it ourselves. Banging away at the SimSense keyboard, you manage to suspend the drive error warning for a time. Digging into the guts of the machine's recent files, you manage to kick it into diagnostic mode. While it's not as good as having access to the full system, maybe you can learn something anyway. Yamaha Sim OS 5.23 System Diagnostics Check Memory OK Drive Error Assist Bust OK Beginning Core Dump Please Wait the long debug spew that scrolls along the synth screen is filled with numbers indicating recent files, play lengths, keyframes, and assist peak levels. Based on the numbers you're seeing, Tong's SimSynth has been hacked to remove the peak controller levels from the chips he's been burning. The required operation to make BTL chips. The delta wave outputs for these chips push them dangerously into brain burning territory. Oh. The file catalog for the high peak BTLs indicates all the files and burned chips should be stored on the missing drives and whatever was in the empty chip jacks. Somebody's cleaned out Tong's BTL stash. <coughs> hmm. So if we can find those drive bays or something, maybe. I'm real tempted to put some points into, I know it won't actually be useful, but I'm tempted to put some points into, uh, biotech. Sure. I just gotta know. Aside from the tremendous trauma of the body suffered, there's no evidence of a struggle, no subdermal, bru subdermal bruising marks, 
the muscles, aside from torque points where the limbs were torn off. The coagulation of blood and the body's lividity marks a time of death between two and four hours ago. The knife marks seem more methodical than they did at first glance. There's been no care to try and preserve the skin as any kind of hole. But it was removed in a fashion similar to filleting a fish, the path of least resistance. What's more, some edges of the flayed skin are ragged, as if cut by a claw rather than a sharpened blade. There is also a deep, razor-sharp cut to the base of Tong's neck that doesn't seem to match any of the other wounds. His spine has been severed between the 5th and 6th cervical vertebra. The wound is consistent with a single blow from a sharp-bladed weapon. Given the trauma across the rest of his body, this is almost certainly the first wound he suffered. Seriously, someone killed him and then just spread his parts all around? It's horrible and disgusting. I'm going to hold out hope he didn't feel any pain. I guess that's everything we can discern here. Are there some Mompoans for us to talk to? What is the, the caged owls? Zippy. Sub zip. This orc is busily snacking on a steamed bun. As you approach, he wipes off one of his hands and sticks that toward you. Hey, stranger, nice to see you. Zippy Toe Tag at your service. How are you liking Wampoa Garden? Sun Plague. Nice to meet you, Zip. Nice to meet you, too. Listen, I know it's a little forward of me to just say hello and whatnot, but I'm interested in giving you a hand if I can. This is my home, at least for the time being. I'd like to stop these killings. We've never met before this, but I know exactly who you are. You're my replacement. The elders had me autopsy what was left of Elder Gon and Elder Nakamura after they got ripped apart. But I didn't want to dig any deeper. So since I don't know you, and I can smell a shadow runner a mile away, you've got to be the outsider that has to stop the killings, right? Nothing gets by you, does it? See, I have good eyes, a lot of good eyes, actually. If you're in the market for replacements, uh, only slightly used, and uh, they only come from certified donors, I swear. <laughs> Man, I kill myself. You stand up comedian? With jokes like that, you killing me? You kidding me? I'm one of the only trained surgeons around here. I keep the other Wampoans healthy. Gotta practice down the road. Blind Chen's a pretty good cyber doc, but he's basically an implant specialist, and that's it. Um, how'd you end up here, Bo? Bro? Well, I did my residency back in the USAS. Could have become a real MD, too, if things hadn't gone south for unrelated reasons. Well, what just happened? or Discord sound, but I'm not sure what. I also deck a little, but I'm a little better at slicing skin than ice. One pole garden seemed a good fit for me. Um, it's fairly peaceful around here, then. Yeah, for the most part, other than these killings, 
We don't have much, by the way, of problems. But we do have information security. We do information security for the triads. And that makes us fairly impervious to anyone who wants to start trouble. Anyone starts something, we hit them in the Matrix while our triad friends hit them in meat space. Some small time gangs have uh, tried pushing in here. But they backed off when they figured out they weren't just picking a fight with Tang and his guys. Both, both the Red Dragon and the Yellow Lotus. They got the message real quick. What was left of them anyway. What do you know about One Paul Garden? What are your thoughts on the murders? It looks like Tong was killed by a blade, sure. Hmm, what kind of blade? Was it a knife, a sword, maybe an axe? I don't know, but it was attacked at the back of the neck. Um, I don't like that at all. This whole affair's got me on edge. Edge, get it? Because it's a blade? People die and it's nothing new, but flayed skin? Ugh. It sounds possible whoever's been killing the others is trying to muddy the waters with all the blood and gore business. This is a crime of an intelligent, careful killer. Be careful. This investigation might take you somewhere very unpleasant. Can you tell me about the elders? Well, they're an eclectic bunch, that's for sure. Where to start? Mm, this is the spiritual leader here. She's the voice of the Wampoans, I guess. A lot of her close friends are really more followers, and she's something of a priest for the machine spirit. But maybe it's a cultural thing for people who grew up here, but it's never called to me. Still, she makes a damn fine pot of tea. Eeps the muscle. He has an encyclopedic dictionary knowledge of cyber and bioware. Definitely a good guy to have watching your back. Not too friendly, but you know how it is. You get a lot of cyber, people start wondering if you'll tear their arms off. He's, he's got moves straight out of Blood Carnival 3, The Reckoning. Terrible move movie, but a great fight choreography. What about Tang? Well, I don't know much about that fella, but he's got some kind of fetish for automation. Found him cooing over some trids of automated delivery drones in a warehouse once. He works with drones. He has a shop called the Blessed Auto Fab. He was running a rant raving about the efficiency of the movement patterns or something or another. You already know about Tong. Ran Sims, BTL, Skill Chips. Gan used to be a city planner before he had a nervous breakdown and got involved in statistical analysis. Uh, Nakamura came from Fukuoka and was interested in entertainment, trid mostly. Spent a lot of time analyzing subliminals and ads. Then there was Magpie. She was the chief decker, hot as hell against ice, but built her own hardware. A salty old woman. Never met anyone who was quite as shrill or nasty when she was mad. And she was mad most of the time. Uh, yeah, when did Magpie die? Uh, she, she didn't. Maybe a month ago, she just up and disappeared. I went to her shop one day, and she just wasn't open. Nobody's seen her since. Kind of a pain in the ass, too. She owed me some new analyzed software she'd picked up. I've never heard of Magpie, either. She must be one of the newer Wampoans. If she was the Decker, she would have replaced Elder Gao. No surprise there. Gao was older than Keen... Than Keen Shuang these terracotta warriors. When I was learning decking from him, he could barely get out of bed. Still fast as hell in the Matrix, though. It's a stupid name. It doesn't actually have much to do with time spent in the community. It has something to do with it, sure. But it's mostly about how skilled you are, how good your connections are, and how much help you can, and how much you can help everybody else. I should have called them experts or something. Bingo, that's exactly it. She was only here for about three years. But she knew a lot of people all over the Matrix. Shanghai, Beijing, all kinds of places. That plus her skill meant she was a shoo-in when Gao died. Where do you think she went? No idea. One day she was here, the next, poof. At first I thought she was just on vacation, since she, uh, she'd mentioned wanting to see the Kingdom of Hawaii someday, but it didn't feel right. 
She would have at least told me she was leaving. Seems mighty suspicious to me. Nobody else seems to care what happened to her. Probably because she pissed him off so bad. Where should I start looking? You might want to check out her shop. It's all locked up, but the other elders have a spare key. Couldn't hurt to look around. And even though Magpie was always button heads with the other elders, they wouldn't have any reason not to let you in. Uh, what do you mean they're butting heads? When you see Magpie and the others, they never saw eye to eye. She was contrary for the sake of it. Most of the rest had a grand vision for what they wanted just this neighborhood to become. Magpie just wanted to deck. She was only an elder because she needed they needed someone with her matrix chops. The last big argument was between her and Eep and Nakamura. It was over some some trivial. I think Nakamura wanted to expand the pirate trid business into the matrix and she just absolutely refused. Why? Said something about them using up valuable bandwidth for trivial entertainment bullshit. Anyway, it went from there into this rant about how she wasn't going to let Tang expand his drone business any further, because it would get too much Megacorp attention. They accused her of blocking them just because she could. Probably true. Lots of screaming. Yeah, what would mean blocking them? Well, everybody needed her Matrix skills for their, for their businesses to run properly. Their other deckers, me, say, or uh, Moj Nabby, but... She had the infrastructure. If their project didn't interest her, she wouldn't even give them time of day. She's a real hard at about having her time wasted, but she figures if she's not interested in something, there's no value. Kind of a major blind spot if you ask me. Could... Could you let me into her shop? No can do, not because I don't want it, but because I just don't have the key. You'd have to get it from Heap. He's taken over all the Matrix infrastructure maintenance since Magpie disappeared. He's not as good as she was, or as I am. But they're not going to let anyone who isn't an elder take care of that kind of critical stuff. See ya. See ya. So we talk to Mojanebi over here and break her hui. Hui. Kata. To America. So we talk to Min Vuong. What about in here? Can we talk to anybody in here? We can. Rainbow. Oh, there's so many people to talk to. Let's talk to the people upstairs. Yeah, we'll finish talking to everyone up here. As we start with uh, Demergo. This man has a tired, world-weary demeanor about him. His eyes track your movements with a penetrating, critical precision. Something about him, the lines of his eyes perhaps, make you suspect he's seen a lot of terrible things happen. He lifts his cup of cheap soy calf as you approach.
Well, let me guess. You're the freelancers elders are paying to look into the murders around here. Yeah. Well, you've got the right kind of eyes, stranger. Like you're looking for something, and you don't seem to trust anyone. Outsiders don't generally wander around Wampoa Garden without an escort. The locals don't make them feel too welcome unless they've been invited. There's only one reason to be inviting Shadowrunners out here. Call me Demerigo. I'm not one of the Wampoans, but I've been here long enough they don't think twice about me being here. So what have you found so far? What's it to you? Professional curiosity. I used to be with the New York Police Department as a part of their Thaumaturgical Research Division. Part of the CSI branch, except I did the magical investigation while the other guys pulled prints and checked blood. When I hear about shit like this happening, I keep my ear to the ground. Old habits, you know. It does seem like you should be the one researching this. Elder Ying asked me to look into the killings after the first murder. She couldn't afford my fee, though, so I took a pass. It's not just the money, either. You see that stuff day after day. You pay a price. It eats away at you. You know what it feels... You know what it's like to feel all that sickness and anger every day? To be asked to pick up a murder weapon and relive somebody's death. Feel it given, going to your neck pleading in the voice of a dead woman for a killer to spare you. These days, I'd rather interrogate the living. Well, that could be useful. Sure, if you're appraising antiques or trying to find where a lost cat went, but turning that on murder scenes is an invitation to horrors beyond imagining. I can read objects. It's called psychometry. A little trick I've managed to pick up. I don't really know how. I hold something, I can tell you what happened to it, who owned it, how it killed someone, if someone loved it, or was afraid of it. Useful, but it'll tax your heart. And before you ask, no, I'm not going to read anything you find. I already told him that I didn't want any part of this. You want advice, I'll give you that, but I'm not getting drawn in further than that. So aside from that, is there anything I can help you with? Uh, Tom was killed by a bladed weapon, a single strike to the base of his neck. Well, that's a precision attack. Most knife fights end up with a lot of shallow cuts and blood over the victim and attacker alike. If Tong was killed by a single strike, he definitely wouldn't have seen it coming. And you can bet your last Nuyen that whoever killed him is highly skilled with the blade. That says to me that the attack is either a professional hitman or a practiced serial killer. Could be both. Assassins don't tend to be the most empathetic people. Was the attack a thrust or a cut? Neither. It was a slash. Um, it was a slash. If the wound was a thrust, your attacker is using a knife of some kind. Anything over about 10 inches would be pretty hard to thrust with that at that kind of angle. The neck's too high for a longer blade. If it's a slash, you're looking at a sword or cleaver attack. Both of those are popular with the triads. They make an awful mess and send a message that they're not to be trifled with. He wasn't afraid. He was caught by surprise. Hmm. That's not what I would have expected. With the amount of mess at each scene, the victim should have left behind a hell of a lot of fear and pain. Are you sure? Uh, very sure. Tong died tonight. It sounds like this wasn't a crime of passion. A planned attack wouldn't have that kind of resonance. Or, no, a planned attack would have that kind of resonance. It's possible the gore show is to throw off anyone looking for the actual reason. Yeah, if I wanted to kill someone and get away with it, I'd try to point the figure at some kind of monster. Basic Investigation 101. It's usually the simplest explanation, but don't discount other possibilities. If the mutilation happened after Tong's death, why would a killer perform that kind of ritual? 
Serial killers who engage in that kind of ritual don't feel perfunctory about it, in my experience. It tends to feel more like they're taking communion. It's a religious or sexual feeling most of the time. If this didn't feel that way, I don't think the killer's actually pathological. Yeah, see you later. What about you, Kita, Kaida? This dumpy looking man is busily hawking a variety of grilled spherical treats of various sizes. Some are sold individually, some are skewered on sticks, and some are packaged up in sets of four or six. A sign on the front of the cart reads Keita's One Yen Yatai. A cacophony of small trid screens are attached to the cart, each playing a different trid show. Interest you in some dango, takoyaki, maybe a nice uh, nikuman that's a pork bun with a Japanese twist. Any kind of tasty Japanese treat you can imagine, I've got it. Maybe some curry fish balls are your speed. Kata will give you your heart's desire, providing that your desire is on my menu. Sure, give me some dango. Your wish is my command, good man. Kata deftly pulls one of the dango sticks out of the cart and drops it onto the grill. A small robotic arm slides out from the cart and means turning the stick until the balls of rice flour are toasted brown. Lifting them from the grill, Kata dips the entire stick in a tub of sticky brown sauce before handing it to you. The snack has both a sweet and salty flavor, reminiscent of sesame seeds and soy. The balls inside are pleasantly warm and surprisingly chewy. A bit like eating raw dough, but without the attendant chalky taste. I didn't realize raw dough had a chalky taste. Kata leans back, studying you intently. The trid projections from his cart cause his face to be lit in a constantly shifting array of rainbow hues. So, uh, what brings you to Wampoa Garden, my friend? Somehow, I doubt it's just the street food. I'm looking into the killing of Wampoan elders. Ooh, I've been hearing a lot about that. I haven't looked too closely, though. It's just none of my business, you know. What's with all the trid screens? You like the My Love Trid operas? Chinese, Korean, Japanese, Indonesian? It doesn't matter. This way I can watch all of my favorite shows without missing a beat, and I can work at the same time. Pirated trade is my other business. I rip the streams in the Matrix, tap right into the corporate feeds, and resell them on a chip out here. I, I wish it could pay the bills, but my food cart's a lot better at that. I don't know why, but most of the other Wampoans seem to like sim over trade. They don't know what they're missing, though. One episode of Thousand Cranes of Autumn, and they'd be hooked for life. I'm just at the part where Orin has confessed her love to Takayama, but he's got to get this mech suit out to the front lines on Mars so he can be with her. Downright heartbreaking, I tell you. That does sound interesting. Oh, you have no idea. 312 episodes chronicling a noble mech pilot and the tumultuous love affair he has with a space station governor's daughter. The pathos, the majesty, the Battle of Lagrange One spans five episodes just by itself. For some reason, I guess it just didn't resonate with the wider public. I don't know why. Who doesn't want to see a trid show about giant flying robots, love, betrayal, and spies? I've got to stop myself before I get carried away. Was there something else you needed? Let's talk about the people here. We're tech heads, deckers, riggers, trid pirates, and everything in between. If I had to define this place, I'd say it's Asia's mecca for people like us. As for the elders, I can give you the basics. I'm a small fry, so we're not exactly on social terms. Ing some kind of crazy tech witch. She summons up spirits and casts spells, and works as the spiritual center of the tribe. She's a lot craftier than she seems, too. She has this mother-to-everyone act going on, but I've watched her manipulate people into doing all kinds of stuff they wouldn't normally do, and they thought it was their idea the whole time. Magically, you mean? No, I don't think so. She's just really good with people. Um, Eve's a killer, 
addicted to cybernetic implants. He always has to have the newest and freshest gear. The funny thing is, I've never seen him fight. I kind of get the impression he's a coward. He'd rather let one of his buddies handle the problem than do it himself. All I know about Tang is that he loves drones and does a little decking. Fi frankly, I find him kind of boring. All he talks about is neural networks, dark knowledge, and the evolution of machine learning. Like I said, boring. See you later, dude. No, let's ask him how he feels about the murders. Blah, 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 blah. Any thoughts on murders? Yeah, ignore them. I saw the crowd down at Tong's Sensory Carnival earlier tonight, but I didn't know the guy very well. I'm a Trid fan. He liked the Sims. Not a lot of crossover between us. Okay. Very helpful. Not really. So we have these two jokers up here. I think that's it. Let's talk to Janebi. The man in front of the stall is rooting through a box of music chips with the swift fingers of someone who knows what they're looking for. Behind him, a music player pumps out a constant stream of distorted, atonal music. The stall's proprietor is nowhere to be seen. Hey, can you believe this? They've got four bootlegs of Echelon 60, the unreleased Enoch Ian Keys double chip show from ba Brazzaville, but absolutely zero chips from Shotgun Bloom. This stall stuff is purely second rate. Hey man, don't get down on Echelon 60. I saw them when they were playing that unlessened show at the old Choco Tart Factory in Suenwan. While the show was amazing, even if the police had to break it up midway through the second act. Sorry, a little bit tired. <laughs> The show might have been great, but come on, Echelon 60's old news. They're already being mainstreamed. I saw a, a Trid ad in the new Mitsu Mitsubishi Astro scooter, and they were using Main Volt Underbus as the backing music. It made me sad, I tell you. Mo Janebi, at your service. Decker, technologist, music fan. Not from around here, are you? You don't hold yourself like a native. I'm from the UCAS. Yeah, I thought so. What brings you out of here? Found out who's been killing the elders. Ooh, that's a nasty business. I heard Tong die tonight. I don't know who or what they pissed off, but it seems like a really bad scene. I'm trying to keep my nose out of it. Still, I like this place. There's nothing I can do to help. I know about the murders. Hey, I'm trying to stay as far away from that as possible. I'm not connected enough to hear anything important. And all the talk about monsters is just plain dark. I'm not afraid of monsters, but I don't want to get their attention. All I know is that a couple of months ago, we had Elders Nakamura, Yatunde Agon, and Magpie, and now we don't. You've heard about Magpie. Tell me more. Uh, to be blunt, she's a hateful, shrewish old badger of a person. It was always her way or the highway. She'd butt heads with the other Elders over damn near anything. Last fight she had was with Tang over something or other. I guess she ended up throwing some of his micro drones into a deep fryer and threatened to kick his ass around the block. Uh, what'd she do? She's decking. We already know that. Matrix gear. Her shop's called the Jackpoint. Not very imaginative, I know. She always had the hottest programs, best chips, and made some killer decks for anybody willing to pay her rates. It cost plenty of new yen, but she was one of the best in the biz. At least in Hong Kong. If you want to know some more about her, you should talk to Zippy. He's one of the only people around here who got along with her. You can probably find him by the MTR station. He loves the steam bun cart over there. So yeah, they're all just nerdy. Oh. Alright, see you later, dude. I want to talk to this hulking fella. An imposing troll stands in front of a stall, overflowing with weapons of all sorts, pistols, rifles, and even brass knuckles, overflow onto the rug around him. Who oh, there! You look like a woman who understands the value of self-defense! Breaker Hui at your service, and I can promise you I can help you defend yourself. What do you say? Want to take a look? Oh, he's just uh, a seller? 
Okay. Yeah, tell me what you want. Maybe I can help you out. You know about Magpie? I never met her, thank God. She ran with the Deckers, mostly, since she dealt in chips and software. I heard she was hard to work with. I think the phrase I overheard was that she shrieked like a harpy with a fresh corpse. I don't know. You should ask Zippy, though. He's a sharp one with the deck, so he'd know her better than most. Knowing about murders. Just that the elders have been getting hacked apart. I've tried to stay away from it. No sense painting the crosshairs on my own forehead, right? I'm nobody important, and I aim to keep it that way. Tell me about the elders. I can't say I associate with them. They organize big trade deals with the Loho Joa pirates, the triads, and legitimate businesses. They tell us if somebody has been blacklisted and dispense justice when someone breaks the rules. Beyond that, they leave us alone, and I leave them alone. I'm just not important enough to register on their radar. Yeah, later, later, later. Let's go down. Try and get Magpie's key. Oh, Ace just ended their stream. Yeah, suck to the elder. Let's see. Yeah, why didn't you tell her about Magpie? Why would we have? Her departure from the Wampoans isn't related to her investigation. It happened before the killings began. I'm certain she's just off silking somewhere. No doubt she'll come waltzing back next month, all full of attitude that life dared to go on without asking for her permission. If she does, we'll come. We'll welcome her back. Despite our problems with her behavior, her skills make her extremely valuable. I've taken over maintenance of our Matrix infrastructure in her absence, but I'm nowhere near her level. The best I can do is ensure nothing breaks down until, until she returns. Um, let's see. Yeah, do you have the key? Yes, but there's a lot of sensitive equipment in there, including our community servers. We don't let anyone who's not one of the Wampoan elders in there. Why would you need to look around? Yeah, listen, you want me to find the killer? If I'm going to do that, I have to explore. Come on, man. Very well, take the key and look around. Just don't break anything or shut the servers off. Hello, Ace. Welcome. How, how, was, how did, how did your stream go? So we play a little bit of Minecraft, a little bit of Amogus. Quiet. I saw other people chatting. Didn't, didn't seem that quiet. Uh, so where the heck's the jack point? Ooh, this is a fancy looking shop. Why is the server open? Who did this? The front of the server's case hangs open, the inner machinery quiet and without power. A clipboard is stuck to the side by a piece of duct tape. Its paper is filled with a long list of programs and their prices. A quick glance over the program sheet reveals names like Bugs 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 and Black Hammer. 
Undoubtedly, this was Magpie's attack program storage machine. Somebody's removed the drives. And it sure wasn't Magpie. Here, look. The main drives were disconnected properly, but it looks like she modded the server to have backup drives with their own battery-based backup power supply. If it was Magpie, she'd have taken that too. Crap, this is a Fuchi XB-1000, and it looks like the battery power ran out a while ago. The XB-1000s are constant write drives. They're dirt cheap and have a ton of capacity, but if they run out of power, they lose their data. We're not going to be able to get anything off the drive. Display case. This bin is full of assorted chips, peripherals, and add-on modules for Cyberdex. They don't seem to be arranged in a coherent fashion, and they're spread across the felt surface. You sift through the display case, searching for anything that might prove interesting. Isabel peers past you into the bin as you search. That's interesting. There's a lot of storage memory, I.O. handlers, and active memory in this bin. But I'm not seeing any MPCP hardware, response increasing chips, or anything related to the hot shit decking Magpie was supposed to be into. In fact, you couldn't even build a full deck with this. Without the MPCP, it'd just be a glorified comm link. Uh, ex expand upon that, please. If I had to guess, I'd say somebody's cleaned her out. MPCP, response increase, biofeedback filters, and all that. They're easy to move, expensive, and highly illegal. All the rest of this crap is good, but it's nothing you could pick up at any electronics. It's nothing you couldn't pick up at any electronics shop. You'd only have to know what you're looking for, though. Only a good decker would know what they're seeing. Would Magpie have taken them? I guess so. But if she did that, why would she leave the completed cyberdex? No, I think this was theft. Magpie's desk is the kind of messy most people only associate with rat's nests, hoarders, and deckers. The surface of the desk is littered with cigarette butts, half-finished cans of soy calf, and scraps of electronics. A towering pile of empty instant noodle bowls sits next to it. Their sides are blazoned with honest wangs, instant old-time wowmian, and depict a line of top hat wearing caterpillars dancing with canes. That sounds glorious. Hey, awesome. I didn't think anybody but me liked Honest Wang's noodles. Flavor like you've never tasted in a package of instant noodles, I promise. Mmm, see, this one's cheese curry broccoli. I don't know why it never caught on, honestly. Gee, who could pass up the delicious, the, the delicious taste of cheese, curry, and freeze-dried vegetables? I know, right? People out here have no idea what kind of culinary delights they're missing. You gingerly root around the desk, doing your best to avoid the more disgusting piles and spills. It isn't easy. The desk drawers are stuffed to overflowing with receipts, cigarette packs, and optical chips and cables. Most of the contents are boring, useless, and disgusting. While searching one of the bottom drawers, however, a low-quality tin lockbox catches your eye. Someone has pried the latch off, leaving a ragged hole where a lock should be. The interior of the box has several sleeves for storing keycards, all of which are empty. A small note is taped to the interior of the box. Spare stockroom keys. The doors in the rear of Miss Yang's restaurant. Do not lose these. Use only if I'm not able to open the stockroom. A stockroom, huh? So who broke the lockbox to get the keys out? Probably whoever cleaned out Magpie's equipment. I'm thinking you're right. Whoever tore the latch off the box was in a hurry. You know, the elders could have cracked the maglock without too much trouble. And most regular Wampoans could too. This seems like somebody who was tossing the place and wanted to get in and out as fast as possible. If someone was after Magpie's gear, her stockroom would be a gold mine.
You search Magpie's bathroom. There's not much in here. A toothbrush, toilet paper, some hairpins, and a collection of cheap makeup. The combination bath shower unit, however, has minor flakes of a dry reddish substance near the drain. Blood. Dried blood. Prying open the drain cover, it looks like quite a bit of it was shed as well. Shit, maybe Magpie didn't take a trip after all. With that amount of blood, I'm guessing somebody killed her quietly and then drained her body in the bath. It'd make it cleaner to relocate. Yeah, that doesn't match the other kill scenes. I'm thinking there's a lot more going on with these murders than we're, than we're initially told. First, they don't even mention Magpie to us. Now it looks like she's been killed. Sung's not right here, the plague. Let's not mention this to the elders. If they're hiding anything, they may start cleaning up their tracks better. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah, I'll talk to Zippy again, I guess. Yeah, let's talk to Zippy. Hey again, how can I help you? You can't, I guess. didn't talk to these fellas. This woman sports brilliantly hued hair that shifts colors scintillating with every passing moment. She is powerfully built, a natural athlete, or someone who works out a great deal. Notably, a large shotgun rests on, her, on an arcade cabinet next to her. She affords you a short glance as you approach. When she speaks, you note a peculi peculiarly lyrical accent to her voice. Something I can help you with there, friend. You're throwing me off me game, and I'm trying to beat my best score. Tank War Europa? I haven't seen one of those cabinets in years. I me neither. Managed to find this one near by accident. But I heard the music and thought, hold on there, Rainbow. You know that tune. Piss on your ma. My right robbery that was. Right then, you don't seem like them wampoans that are all a might touch, do you? Maybe you are too, but you don't advertise it like they do. What's your story? Um, looking into the murders. Ah, that's some nasty work. Buddy's hacked up, chunks bitten out of him. Make sure you're loaded for something big and ugly, that's for certain. Uh, what you doing here in Wampoa Garden? Me? I'm a bit of a game hunter, a big game hunter these days. I get into strange places, look for some kind of paracritter I've not seen before, and then put a bullet in it. Only the nasty ones, though. No point in hunting a tails cat or something. It's only such things as gargoyles, bar guests, and whatnot. All the work I did with them in my youth does a good job keeping me alive. I was out in Jakarta last year hunting one of them Indonesian vampires. You ever hear of them? Call them Lek or Penangalans or something. Their heads and guts come out of every body cavity and they fly around like a giant messy pile of pasta. Took me a solid two months to track her down, but I did. Once the job was done, I asked myself, Okay, Rainbow, where's the best place in... I've completely changed my accent. Where's the best place in East Asia to find some action? So Hong Kong it was. I'm done with this. She doesn't seem to have anything interesting. Where are you from? I can't place that accent. It's all over the fucking place. In Dublin. Alright. Eat whiskey? What? Uh, what's 
that? An eight whiskey? Oh, is this thing that was on the previous screen that I just sort of <laughs> skipped? Maybe. A demon horse? What is an eat whiskey? I have to know. Oh. Nay! Each eat whiskey. Whiskey is just the word for water, which is how whiskey got its name. It's a cannibal horse. A cannibal horse that drags you into bogs to kill you. Oh, Kelpies! Okay. I know what a Kelpie is. Oh. Oh, so she has like a cool power that blocks magic? Liam O'Connor. Alrighty. Hey, Kuma. Thank you. Let's see. Yeah, definitely having a a great day today. Hopefully you too. Oh, it worked? That stinks. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> You're a shadow runner now. Ah, oh, thanks, man. Uh, so yeah, this lady is old, this elf. Irish noggin. All right, she's not telling us anything helpful at all, though. I really don't want to read through her entire backstory. It has nothing to do with um, with the the murder. Don't be so dramatic. Let's just get out of her. What's this we do? Min Blong. So we have that guy and we have one guy, one lady in here. What was her name? Winke Kwok. Winke. Winke Kwok. Kwok? So, I wonder how it's actually pronounced. Uh, I'm not big on coffee. I don't know. I wish I liked coffee more, but I really just don't. Unless it doesn't taste like coffee anymore. Like if it has, um, like, like a frappuccino or something. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome to Croc Atelier, home of the finest clothing in Wampoa Garden. I'm the owner, Master Taylor, Wing Quay Quack. How may I serve you today? Um, I didn't expect the garden to have tailors. Many people don't. There's a mistaken impression that we Wampoans are only interested in technology and the Matrix. But even technologists need clothing, don't they? And many of us gravitate toward lines of work where added protection is required. I myself am a materials scientist as well as a keen follower of fashion trends. Uh, explain. Fiber related, of course. Primarily aramid fibers, graphene composites, and dilettantes. D delayance? I don't. Hmm. 
it affords me a certain unique perspective when designing clothing that's not only beautiful, but defensive as well. I specialize in high fashion body armor, similar to the kind crafted by SecureTech or Vashion Island, but with much more personal touch. Uh, so you won't tell us anything about the murder, you're just here to sell clothing. And that is perfectly fine. Except we are almost broke. We can't afford anything. Hopefully we can come back here. Get some cool threads. The owner of this shop barely looks from his PDA while greeting you. His tone is one of immense boredom. Welcome to Min Vuong Matrix Materials, aka MVMM. What can I get you? Oh, there's just another merchant. Hmm. Let's buy another one of these. Sure. See you later. So wait, have we talked to everyone? Are we just really dumb? Find a key to Magpie's stockroom. Without talking to them. Okay. How are we supposed to just find a key? still something in here, is there? No, right? <laughs> I wish Gobbit's rats could sniff it out for us. It's totally going to be this weird dude, right? Let's talk to the detective. Yeah, what do you know about murders? Yeah, we... we... I thought this was stuff that we already talked to him about, but I guess we didn't? Wait, what? Red Spear Gangers? Oh, in here. Pay more attention. I really thought where I went through that dialogue with him. Hey, that's far enough, lady. This this lot's our turf. If you're looking for a fix, you're welcome to trade. If you're not here for biz, clear the hell out. You try and wander around on our turf, we're gonna have to air you out. So what do you say? You looking for a little pick me up? A little nitro to give you some pep? Maybe you want some chips. Take the edge off. You want it? I got it. Attack them! Oh. Some of these BTLs are starting to look an awful lot. Do they? Show me what you have. Drugs. Ordinary drugs. What happened in the fight here? As far as I know, some police showed up looking for somebody. They got in here. All of them. All of them got killed. Whoever they were after was long gone by the time they showed up. Used to be a lot of Wampoans living here. They all cleared out, muttering about ghosts and shit like that. Have you heard anything else about the murders? <sighs> Nothing much. I tell you what, though. I've got a guy named Kang. He was doing, uh, he was down in the storm drain system last week. Someone was moving down there, big too, man sized. But it wasn't speaking any language Kang understood. Kid beat feet back here, back as uh, fast as he could. 
dumbass drops his storm drain key on the way out. You want to go looking for whatever it was? He'll have to go get a new key from somebody else. Kang stole his from a city worker. Would the elders have a key? There's a guy named Porter Lamb who's got keys to pretty much everything. He's at somewhere, uh, somewhere between a cop and a handyman. Ewan also mentioned some elf woman with crazy colored hair who managed to scam a key. Said she hunted paracritters down there, devil rats and shit. Um. Yeah, are they selling BTLs from Tong Shop? Oh. Yeah, we're not trying to get that in trouble. I just want some some information. Give me give me the deets. Yeah, I guess that's fair. It's like this. Broken Thumb Yuan was walking down the street, sees this guy going to Tong's joint right at closing time. Tall guy, hunched over, had this shitty gray rain poncho draped over him. Now Yuan figured that was weird as hell, so he posts up and waits. Figures the guy'll come out soon, cause Tong's closing up shop. Nothing for 15 whole minutes. Guy comes out, hustles down the street with nobody saying boo. Figure he was waiting for an ebb in the crowds. Yuen sees some blood smeared on the door though, so he goes check it out. Inside, total carnage. But you know what? Tong's not gonna be using his gear anymore. So to hell with it. Yuen jacks a lot of it. Yeah, biz is biz. That's fine. Whatever. you damn right it is. That's all I know. The guy had to be the killer. Tall, gray rain poncho, hunched over. Also smart about how he came and went. Can I look around the garage? Woman, are you deaf? What the hell did I tell you? No, you goddamn well can't wander around our turf. Okay, sorry. Later. Uh, come on. I want to wander. So when you get that key, let's talk to Porter. I don't see any reason he wouldn't just give it to us. If not, we'll uh, chat up Rainbow. Hey there, need something else? Hmm, one second. What can you tell me about Elder Magpie? That she was a bitch? I've never been anyone as deliberately contrary as her. There's not much to say. Nobody wanted to hang out with Magpie. Even though she was the newest Elder, she acted high and mighty around everyone. She'd block deals and argue against Nakamura and Ying just because she could. By the way, I, I'm very aware that this is probably not Mm. <laughs> I just don't, uh, I don't know how that's pronounced. I could, I could look it up. I guess I should. Yeah, I don't know. It looks like it is just ing. Mm. Mm. So, okay. Why is she so contrary? It's just her nature. She loves fights and gossip. Any chance to cut somebody else down, she'd take it. I guess I always figured she'd had some deep-seated insecurities and covered it up by attacking other people. Well, that's cool. Do you have a key to the storm drain system? Um, sure. Why do you ask? Drop a gun down or a, a gun down a grate or something? Yeah, you know, just just following up a lead. You know. In that case, take the damn key. You'll have to forgive me if I don't want to go down there with you. <sighs> Knock yourself out, woman. There's an entrance up by the Jade Mountain restaurant. Can't miss it. Yeah, it did look like somebody else went through Tong's things. Well, not since I've been here. But before Yip found him? Could have been anybody, really. Yip had a key to this place. 
The block's total crap. Anybody half decent at cracking maglocks who got inside. What's missing? This BTL's hard drives and crab sticks. Sounds like the killer looted his place to me. All this talk of monsters, yeah, sure. There are scary things that go bump in the night. But most of the scary bumps I hear are from handguns and gangers. We'll see ya. Where I know who stole the goods. So where's this restaurant? The Jade, oh, right here. Ah. Blood. Hope this is not Chris's blood. Whoa, whoa, uh, crew, what the heck? Why are you zipping around everywhere? Body parts. The disgusting pile of stinking human remains smells strongly of blood and the first stages of decay. The arms, legs, and organs here are heaped together like stacked firewood, leaking blood and gore across the floor. The parts contained therein appear to have been sliced away from the parent body rather than torn or bitten. Judging by the clean edges of the cuts, the blade used to sever these parts was extremely sharp. Well, there's a whole world of messed up the plague. You think the killer stashed these here? They're stacked. They've been organized. Yeah, this be our killer. Looking closer at the pile, one part stands out. It's a severed forearm and it's covered in tattoos. Words in a Slavic language and a shining lighthouse adorn the far forearm and ring like images are inked on each finger. On the back of the hand, there's a skull inside of a square. Whoever owned this arm isn't likely to be Wampoan, as the tattoos look like they were poorly drawn and inked by hand, rather than a machine. Most likely, Russian criminal tattoos. Now that is interesting. Despite the darkness, you see something glitter at the edge of the drain. Looking closer, it appears to be a necklace chain of some kind. It's become caught in the drain's grate, notably, narrowly avoiding falling down the deep pit. A silver necklace. Lifting the necklace out of the drain, you turn it over in your hand. It's a simple silver pendant on a chain. The silver pendant depicts a long-tailed bird in flight. A magpie. Magpie. Okay, maybe we'll show that to Zippy. See if he knows anything. We don't want to tip our hand to the elders just yet, right? What's this way? Nothing. Uh, whoa. Whoa, who are you guys? As you round the corner, you hear voices speaking just loudly enough for you to make out coherent sentences. The speakers are definitely not local. They speak with a slight Slavic accent, and their clothing is heavily armored. Around them are a number of crates and boxes, all mostly filled. It looks like the group is packing up. Yaroslav says the boat will be ready tomorrow morning. He has gotten everything arranged with the port authority. We'll move the goods to his warehouse. He'll handle loading them onto the ship, and we can get paid right then and there. I'll be glad to be done with this filthy place. Yeah, I will too. I hate having to hide in these damn drains. It stinks down here. I can hear the devil rats running down the walkways. It's a mess, and it's disgraceful. We shouldn't have to put up with this bullshit. And Alexander still isn't back from his little trip. We'll have to... Leave him behind if he doesn't get back soon. I know, Galena. Until Andre says we're in the clear from the triads, we can't be seen with the goods on the street. They find us, we go back to Vladislav, Vladivostok in sausage casings. Those red dragon Mudokai. Mud <laughs> Wait, M Mudaki? Mudok I don't know, man. Don't screw around when it comes to protecting their turf. Who knows? Maybe Alexander was stupid and they caught him. 
Either way, we'll have to lug this crap through the drains for a few clicks. So we'll talk to those red dragon dudes. A magpie. So okay, they have magpies equipped. Oh. What if we hear a curious little pest? Come looking for things that don't concern her. What do we do with pests, Galita? We break them, Vasilis, Vasil, Vasilisa. And we hammer a spike through each of their throats so anyone who sees their bodies knows not to meddle in our affairs. I suggest you stay where you are, pest. Huh. Yeah, they might not be the serial killers. They might have just looted Magpa's stuff. I'm not here to metal. Oh, okay, maybe they are. Do I know what happened to Alexander? I did talk to that guy who had a Slavic accent earlier, but I didn't talk to him about that and didn't, didn't pry into it. I kind of regret that now. Uh, sure, I don't... IRL, I, I don't know what happened to Alexander, but maybe my character does. If you've so much as touched him, your suffering will become the stuff of legend, I promise. Where is he? Uh oh. Oh, is he the guy that we found when we first came down here? Chopped up in a pile of body parts. You piece of shit, what did you do to him? Uh, I didn't. Serial killer, why should we believe you? Yeah, we just need the key card. We need Magpie's key card. Keeping my hands up. I need the key cards. Heck yeah. He said I'm to sweep the stock room. Sweet. We can do this peacefully with people. Oh, okay. There's more in there than I'd want to fight, anyways. Okay, the stock room is um, it's in another restaurant, right? Yeah, the stock room we're looking for is in another castle. Let's go. For a stock room, there's not much stock in here. Food. Despite the table's crude construction, an artfully laid meal awaits the owner. Several small dishes are filled with pickled vegetables, while a larger plate is arranged with long slices of raw meat. The meat is a pale pinkish white, like raw pork, and is covered in a light soy marinade. Poking at the raw meat, you discover that it's surprisingly tender. What's more is the faint aroma of marinade, as if deliberately prepared. No, don't eat some. Leave it alone. Don't eat random meat you find laying around. This box is packed full of odds and ends. It nearly overflows with a collection of knickknacks, souvenirs, and assorted personal effects. There's no rhyme or reason to the collection of items. They appear to have been thrown in haphazardly. Among the contents are charms from various temples, a wooden mask, and a paper fan. A mask, you say? The wooden mask is extremely light. It's been painted a pale white, and the surface is almost as smooth as porcelain. Delicate features and lifted eyebrows are matched with bright red lips and delicately carved teeth. The teeth have been stained a deep black. What about the fan? Unfolding the fan, you tilt it up towards the light to examine it. 
The image depicts an East Asian city from the 19th century or earlier, curved roofs at sunset beside a deep blue river. Two ships sail down the river, which is in turn spanned by a long wooden bridge. In the foreground, laborers carry buckets along the shore, as a man on horseback rides in the opposite direction. In the distance, a pair of large red buildings dominate the skyline. One large temple hall and a five-tiered pagoda. The small charms are square cloth packets, each approximately one inch wide and three inches tall. They come in a variety of bright colors and are embroidered with characters for prosperity, peace, wealth, and protection. Inside, each appears to be a folded paper prayer or fortune written in Japanese. As you step away from the box, you hear a slight click in the distance, the sound of the door's latch shutting. You are no longer alone in the stockroom. Uh-oh. Who the fuck are you? Standing before you is a man clad in heavy armor and bearing a katana on his hip. His skin is an ashen gray, his eyes dead white. His teeth are jagged and appear quite sharp. This is no man, this is a ghoul. The ghoul's blind eyes search back and forth as it regards you. It cannot see you, but you have a sense that it knows exactly where you are at all times. Oh, a hired gun, no doubt brought to bear against me by the Wampoan elders. A means by which they can lift the curse plaguing them. I salute your tenacity, but I wonder, will you hear me out before raising your weapon to kill me? Sure, I'll hear you out. Yes, I'm not only talking, I am reasoning as well. And since you have not attempted to kill me, your own higher faculties are engaged. I am a curiosity to you. You wish to know not only what I am, but what I have done. As for who, you may call me Gai Chu. Let's see. I know who you are. You're the one killing the Wampoan elders. You are correct. I have killed all the Wampoan elders to date, though only Elder Magpie was according to my initial plan. I regret the deaths of the other elders, but it was necessary. Explain yourself. This affair began simply enough. As you may surmise, I am not someone who can be seen in public without great risk. Wampoa Garden is an excellent place to hide, no police or triad presence, and minimal interest in seeing things that lurk in the shadows. Unfortunately for me, Elder Ng discovered me through communion with her spirits. Rather than kill or chase me away, she came to me with a proposition. Mm and the other elders are, were having problems with one of their number. An elder named Magpie had been holding many of their plans hostage and would not budge. They could not remove Magpie, however, because her services were too useful to the Wampoans at large. Mm offered me payment to dispose of Magpie, and I accepted. Why the hell are we talking to this thing, Plague? It's a goddamn ghoul, and you know what they're like. Really, pray tell, what am I like? All teeth and claws and bad manners, I expect. Really, you want to crack jokes, you cannibal? You're the kind of monster that devour a family just because it's convenient. Remember the 162s? The plague? He's just like them. Uh, yeah, I was back in the Barrens, Dunk. That's miles away. Come on. Let that makes a bit of difference. Go on then, talk to the monster. But I'm keeping my finger, finger on the goddamn trigger. I believe we were speaking of the Elder's plans to have me kill Magpie. 
Surely you must be a little curious about that. Yeah, it was sloppy. Ah, unfortunate. I had thought I was careful enough. Having it on my hands must have obscured my sense of smell enough that I missed the last remnants in the drain. I disposed of Magpie's body by emptying the blood in her bathroom. Then I cut her up into more portable pieces. Those were placed in a plastic tarp, which I took to the storm drains and hid. It's unfortunate, but my survival depends upon consumption of raw metahuman flesh. Letting such nourishment go to waste would be a foolish error. Why kill the other elders? I contacted the elders, not in person, of course, and they arranged to exchange payment. I assumed that since the job was done, Ing would be a woman of her word. I was mistaken. I arrived at the nearby parking garage the elders had told me about. They'd cleared out the other Wampoans under some pretense, though I'm not sure what ruse they used. The elders never showed up. Instead, several members of the Hong Kong police force arrived. They were more heavily armed than usual, so I suspect they knew something of my nature. Damn. You're pretty cool, dude. Took on a whole police squad? Yeah. Of course. I have survived as a ghoul for some years now, on the streets of Hong Kong. If that isn't evidence of enough of my tenacity, I doubt any words I could say to you will change your mind. A betrayal of that sort cannot stand. Not only was I not paid for my time and effort, the Wampoan elders treated me like a common animal, and I am so much more than that. Reputation is everything, and I had none. I had hoped to build a network of contacts that I would be able to continue finding work. But with that treachery, my hopes were dashed. I decided to become the monster that they feared. One by one, I have eliminated them. They know how to contact me and could have ended their nightmare at any time by making amends. I would have asked for more money, but I would not I would have ceased my hunt if they did not. Instead, they contacted you, no doubt asking you to eliminate me where the police had failed. So I ask you, what now? What will you do? Will you attempt to finish what the Wampoans started, or will you treat me with the same humanity I have shown you? Um, yeah, why wouldn't they just pay you? I don't get it. Any number of reasons. They are notorious cheapskates and will always try to save money when dealing with outsiders. It could be their natural inc inclination toward profit. They may regard me as subhuman and therefore unworthy of respect. It could be that they felt I was too dangerous to allow to live. It could even be that they simply did not like me. The net result is the same, however. They reneged on a deal we brokered and attempted to have me killed. A message must be sent. Blood must be paid. As they have hired you to kill me, they have obviously not learned their lesson. Yeah, but what will you do if, if you survive? kill the rest of the elders, of course, and anyone else they send to exterminate me. It's a matter of survival. Should I ever have the opportunity to work freelance again, potential employers need to understand the price of betrayal. These murders are my curriculum vitae in revenge. Oh. Come and work with me. Come and work with me. A curious offer, and what of the elders? Will you allow me the satisfaction of killing them? I want to see what they have to say. Hmm, I would counsel you not to believe their words, but you have the sound of one who is as wary, uh, who is wary as a matter of course. Very well. Let us wait until a bit later in the night. Most pedestrians will be off the street and it will be easier for us to approach the Wampoa without being noticed. Sweet, let's do it. The 
brought this big hulking armored ghoul with us. I want to get a better look at him. Hmm. Is there anyone in these other rooms anymore? No. Okay, mm, what do you have to say for yourself? As you approach, Elder Ng's eyes widen. Her mouth falls open and the veins on her neck bulge. What, what are you doing? You've brought this thing into our home. Quick, kill it before it kills us. Yeah, I have to say, this isn't a good idea. Why the hell is a ghoul in here and why is it wearing armor? Calm yourselves. I am not an it, and your elders know this intimately. Good evening, Elder. Mm, I can smell your fear, and I'm glad of this. It means you're learning the price of betrayal. Whoa, whoa. What the hell's going on here? Can someone explain to me why the ghoul is talking? The elders have been lying to the Wampoans. We would never lie to the Wampoans. Our role is to protect the community, not lie to it. What proof do you have to back up your claims? <sighs> yeah, I'm interested to hear what kind of evidence you have to support this theory of the plague. As far as I can tell, this monster killed Tong and the others. That makes him a threat that should be eliminated. They died because they betrayed him rather than pay him for the killing of Elder Magpie. Do you believe this vermin? This creature that feasts on metahuman flesh that kills and dismembers our tribesmen? You are a naive and foolish woman if that's the case. What proof do you have Magpie is dead? Mm, please. It matters where an elder is accused of breaking our law. The other elders generally judge them. In matters where all of them have been accused, I am authorized to act as judge. Make your case, Shadowrunner. There's a large amount of blood in her shower drain. So what? Perhaps she cut herself and washed the cut off, or perhaps you are mistaken about it being blood. You're simply guessing as to what happened. That's true. It's a guess. And even if it is her blood, that doesn't prove the elders hired this ghoul to kill her. The elders have always protected Wampoa Garden to the best of their ability. What about this necklace? This is definitely Elder Magpies. If you found it in the storm drain, that's suspicious, but hardly proof on its own. Of course it's not proof. The number of things lost down storm drains in Hong Kong must number in the tens of thousands per year. While unusual, it's hardly evidence of foul play. She hasn't been seen in a month. That may be unlikely, but it's hardly impossible. You haven't established that the elders were involved. All you've done is make suppositions about it. What proof do you have that we hired and betrayed this creature? I won't sit by and listen to idle accusations without any kind of concrete evidence to back it up. What about the fight with the Hong Kong police force? How do you mean? What does that have to do with the elders and the ghoul? You want poems, don't allow police inside the area. Why make an exception this time? The police were polite and asked our permission to enter. They were hunting a non wampoan and that is reason enough for us to allow them in. That, that doesn't add up, Bing. Why would the police ask us for entry now? They've never been polite before, and they've always tried to force their way in here. It just doesn't ring true to me. Did you ask them to come in order to hunt down this ghoul? Preposterous, Porter. You know what our community is like. We wouldn't lie over something like this. This ghoul has been lying the entire time, trying to cover his tracks. He still brutally murdered several elders. <sighs> That's true. Those murders were vicious and cruel. I don't see any way to explain that away. 
This ghoul is a monster for how he killed Tong and the others. And he died quickly from a sword blow to the neck. I struck Tong down with a single blow from my sword. The mess of the made of the body was to send the elders a message, but I had no desire to make Tong suffer. At any time, Ing and the other elders could have made amends, and the killings would have ended. Instead, they hired a shadow runner to kill me. It's not about cruelty, it's about sending a message. That's not what I would have expected, looking at the body. You killed him before you dismembered him? That's right, and I killed the other elders in a similar fashion. There was no cause to prolong their suffering. The message was for the living elders, not the dead. If the elders wished to treat me like a monster, I would terrorize them like one until they paid reparations for their mistake. Oh, come on, you can't possibly believe this crazy story. It's absolutely insane. It wasn't tortured. We checked the residue. That's correct. I struck a single blow while his back was to me. His death was instant. Regrettable that he had to die for your folly, but it was necessary to protect my reputation. You cannot believe what these people say. They are not to be trusted, and even if this is true, he still killed Tong. Maybe so, and but a monster would not take Tong's suffering into account. He may be a killer, but he's not heartless. Yeah, it's just made to look horrific. I believe you. The blood smeared on the walls, the removal of his skin. That's a scene designed to evoke horror, not the scene of an actual fight. Elders, what do you have to say in response? So I'm wondering if maybe we have missed something that we need to do. Maybe we could have taken the necklace to Detective Dude. Maybe he would have made an exception and held it to do his weird medium mojo. We didn't go talk to Zippy again. Uh, I'm hoping, hoping that we have all the clues we need. This is a farce. We have dedicated ourselves to protecting the Wampoan tribe and everyone who lives in Wampoa Garden. Do you really believe outsiders and monsters over our word? We who have only tried to end the killings. You've been duped, Porter. You and this Shadow Runner. I concur. Porter, you know me. You know the kind of person I am. I wouldn't be party to the killing of another elder. I can't believe we're even entertaining the notion that we have to defend ourselves. We should be disposing of this ghoul instead. If you think I'll forget this, you're sorely, sorely mistaken. I will not tolerate this insult. Oh. Yeah, the elders were very happy to have the Red Spears move into the garage. That's right. Ape, you even told me not to find out what happened with the fight. You said the Red Spear gangers were moving in to leave them alone. Why would you tell me not to look into it? I was only trying to protect you from the Red Spears. They're dangerous, which is why I wanted to deal with them directly. Oh, this that's all I've got? That makes me feel very sad. It means I am probably missing something. Magpie's gear was missing, obviously missing. Why didn't Eep tell me that? He would have done... He would have had to have noticed, and Magpie's shop is locked up. Why didn't he want me investigating? Pure supposition. You think it proves something that I didn't notice equipment was missing. Magpie's shop is always a horrible mess, so okay. Here's something weird. That's the second time that we've referenced Eep uh, being the one that took over for Magpie's shop. But it's actually Tang. Um, so that's that's just a little bit weird. Tang, you did a full inventory of the Magpie's Matrix servers. You assured us everything was running fine and would be able to continue her work. I find it hard to believe you missed something as obvious as missing equipment, especially while searching her stock. 
Alright, I think I have some idea of what's going on here. And what do you believe the real story is? Gaichu seems to be telling the truth. Elders, too many facts don't add up. You're obviously hiding something, possibly a great deal from the rest of the tribe. I'm sorry, but I have to take you into custody until the community can decide the extent and manner of your punishment. Death would seem appropriate to me, especially given that they kept up this charade, even to you, one of their most trusted citizens. Don't you dare talk to me like that, you disgusting beast. Eep, no. Don't make this any worse than it already is. Thank you, the plague. I'll make certain that justice is meted out. You're free to go, and I will ensure payment is delivered to you, as long as you take Gaichu with you. I can't have him staying here. Yeah, he'll be coming with me. <sighs> As you exit the Wampoa into the sweltering night of the air of the Kowloon streets, Gaichu turns to face you. I confess, I'm unhappy with the decision to allow the Wampoan elders to live. We should have killed them, if for no other reason than to maintain our reputation. That's why I let them live. Hmm. I can accept this. I am unused to working with Shadowrunners and assumed you would see things as I do. Hopefully there is much I can learn from you. Shall we leave this place? I am eager to be done with Wampoa Garden. Yeah, come live on our boat with us, I guess. What a weird and wacky crew we are. So I didn't find all of the clues, and I feel, I feel like we could have gotten maybe a, a better ending even than that, but confirm. The MTR rockets noiselessly toward Hioi along the edge of Kowloon Bay. The black water glitters in the night with the light of a thousand reflected storefronts. Gaichu stares sightlessly out the window, one hand pressed to the glass. The plot by the elders is exposed, and Porter Lamb is in your debt. You have a new ally and the respect of the Wampoans. Sometimes everything goes right on a job. You count yourself lucky this was one of those times. Okay, let's go claim payment. Steven Dynamite, who the hell are you? A disheveled man in filthy rags teeters on the sidewalk, wobbling on unsteady legs. His bloodshot eyes dart about desperately, and the acrid sweet odor that wafts off him buzzes unpleasantly in your nostrils. You okay, man? You, you have to help me, man. I n need... Your help. Um. Wait, why? Why? Why are all of these options like me being an asshole? Um. Well, fuck. What's the least asshole one of these? If he actually needs help, I'll help him. I don't... The man yanks you closer. Your eyes are watering from his pungent proximity. Still, you notice that his tattered clothing bears designer logos. But please, please take Handsome Lee a, a message from me. Yeah, who are you? Why are you touching me? I'm Steven! S Steven Dynamite! He nods eagerly, desperation in his eyes. A sluggish tongue wipes itself over the cracked skin of his lips. Look, you've got to help me. I've been p poisoned. The crap that Lee sold me put bad things in my head. Whenever I close my eyes, I see dark, narrow tunnels. 
So many. Hands grabbing, razor sharp teeth gnawing, and the children. Oh, jeez. Sure, it's not just a bad trip. I, I know my way around substances well enough to know a bad trip when I have one. This is something else. The younglings. He's he 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 saw a child slicer. Uh, yeah, I'll do what I can. Got to handsomely. Then tell Lee what he's done to me, that I need relief. Tell him what I want. Uh, what do you want? I just want my money back. Poison Nightmare's money back. Got it. Please hurry. Okay. <coughs> Where the hell do I find Handsome Lee? Is it down here? Nope. Is he in the club? X Flow. Oh, we could have hired X Flow. A wiry elven woman leans over the bar. Propped up on one elbow, she glances back at you over her shoulder as you approach, lifting a half-empty glass to her lips. The selection here is total crap, but it's cheap. I hope you're not looking for quality, or you're going to be really disappointed. Well, as long as I don't go blind, I don't care. Yeah, I guess. Hey, that's the spirit. With an attitude like that, you won't get disappointed very often. I figure as long as it gets you drunk, it's good with me. Call me x -Flow, by the way. Maybe we can help each other. Nice to meet you. I'm the Plague. Yeah, I don't know who Handsome Lee is. I would love to know where he is. I've got good eyes for people in the business, and believe me, you smell like Shadowrunners and Nguyen. Plus, everybody here has been talking about Kindly's new hired help. I'm out here for work. You need any backup? I'm available. Uh, yeah, what do you do, lady? I'm what the eggheads call a mystic adept. Kind of a physical adept magician. I throw spells and I can kill with a touch. I'm rarer than unicorns, my friend. Cheers. See ya. Uh, so you sell drugs. Do you know where Handsome Lee is? Yeah, I don't actually want to talk to you. Handsome Lee, where are ya? A spider Shen, the monk. That's a sailor. Sure, let's talk to the sailor. Three people, possibly locals, are busily hunched over, avidly discussing something beneath their breath. From the look of them, they appear to be sailors, rough-hewn clothes stained by salt, leathery skin, and an acute awareness of being on land. You watch their feet shuffle awkwardly on the docks. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Their whispers are just within earshot. Nah, that's crafty, and she said the shame. Them dreams is bad. Think we'll lose them at sea? We're supposed to set out soon to make that delivery. What if they follow us? Yeah, don't think so. Crafty said these things is just affecting right here for now. As soon as we sail, dreams will stop. Hey, what you looking at, Landy? 
The third sailor sees you and taps your friends on the arms. They shoot upright. One examines his fingernails, and another coughs loudly and begins to hum. Okay. Yeah, there was a merchant. Wasn't there? Yeah, I've, I've had the dreams too. Seems anyone who comes by these parts is having them. And as soon as they leave, the dreams stop. Right eerie it is. We don't know much ourselves. We've only just returned from our last delivery, but the dreams ambushed us fast enough. Hey, what about that crafty? She runs the five phases. Smart girl might know a thing or two about this blight. You ask her and she might have something more to say. See you later. Maybe she knows where... Handsome Lee, we found him. Or we can go into Reliable Matthew's trailer. Uh, look in it, not go into it. The side of Matthew's trailer looks freshly scrubbed. It reeks of kerosene. Broad swaths of the flaking paint have been removed, revealing the brittle plastic siding, discolored by years of acid rain. You can still see the faded black traces of erased graffiti. It reads, Job Stealer. Something thumps inside the trailer. You could easily peer in one of the windows, and I do so. Inside are dingy, cramped living quarters, cluttered with broken drones and unwashed dishes. What looks like a rumpled, motley-colored shag carpet is heaped over about half the tiny space, obscuring most of the furniture. After a moment, the shag carpet moves. It rises about a foot and surges slightly toward the window. Then it stops, pulsing and fidgeting. It's hard to see it clearly through the built-up grime on the window. It's just a pupper, right? The carpet is actually plush-covered drones. Oh. Teddy bears, raccoons, little dolls. There must be two dozen inside the caravan. All companionship models. They're all looking at you as if they've realized you're not Matthew. They watch, fidgeting. Then in one coordinated motion, they all lie down and go dormant again. Uh, you in some freaky stuff, Matthew. Hey, the plague, beautiful. To what do I owe this unexpected pleasure? Why well, you're not here for some robotics, are you? Well, shucks. Um, uh, someone, yeah, someone wrote job steal on your trailer. Uh, what do you mean, the paint? That's just some neighborhood kids. Good kids, I'm gonna lurk. I nearly fell over laughing when I saw it this morning. Uh, why would someone call you a job stealer? Hey, no idea. Jobs are job drones. Blah, blah, blah. Drones are job makers. I know what you're thinking, the plague. I think it myself. Drones take jobs. Well, medicine takes jobs from undertakers, and sewer drones take jobs from people who used to crawl through filth to feed their families. When you th when you see a drone messenger made, it's easy to think that used to be a person. Could be, could be, but that person can do another job now. And they can have a drone themselves. Everyone is better off. Why, the same people called drone dealers job stealers often themselves come to me for... Hey, let's, let's not get all wound up about this stuff. It's too cheery a day for running off our heads. It's not a cheery day at all, it's raining. I notice you have a lot of drones in your trailer. Uh, drones in the trailer. Oh, I, I think I have a couple in there. Probably ones I'm fixing. Looked like a full playpen to me. Yeah, funny thing about drones. When you see a few, they always look like so many more. Weirdest thing. Strange little fellas. Let's not talk about maintenance. It's boring. I bet there's something you need today. Yeah. Oh, I still have no money. I got... Yeah, I haven't claimed my payment for the job. Later. And some Lee. What the hell have you done to that man? To Steven Dynamite. To Stevie D. It's muggy out, even for Hyoi and monsoon season. You pause to mop your brow, and suddenly you feel eyes upon you. As you glance up, you meet the tranquil, searching gaze of a man half-hidden in the shadows. He's wearing a crisp white tailored suit. 
Nasu's shirt. Shirt sleeves neatly rolled with a dark gray silk tie and smart black trousers. If he's sweating, you don't see it. The man tilts his head ever so slightly in greeting. Milady. A newcomer, welcome. Handsome Lee is the name, purveyor of enhanced sensory experiences. I can see you've got some tales to tell. Let's see what you got. Oh, okay, you just, you're a drug dealer, got it. I ran someone with a message for you. Yeah, I think I can guess. Steven Dynamite? You're so smart, can you guess what his message is? From an avid consumer like Steven, there's only one possible message. More. Yeah, no, he's actually saying you poisoned him. <laughs> with the myriad of drugs that Steven filters through his system, it's almost an honor to be singled out this way. That said, I seriously doubt I poisoned him. Go ahead, though. Tell me what he wants. He wants his Nunyan. So there was absolutely nothing wrong with my latest creation. It was painstakingly designed to elevate the senses and titillate the spirit. A smooth high that I have indulged in myself. Now, if the unfortunate Steven happened to dilute my masterpiece with other, lesser substances, I can hardly be held responsible. Yeah, give, give, me, give me the money. There is no money, not anymore. I have expenses, just as I'm sure you do. But here, give this to Steven with my regrets. It's a freebie. It's what our dealer Stephen Dynamite really wants. Whether he admits it or not, deliver with my compliments. As freebie of yours, it's supposed to cure his nightmares. Of course not, but it will bring relief. And if I'm not mistaken, that's what Stephen's itching for right about now, correct? Yeah, relief is what he used, he said. I told you, I know Steven well enough to guess when he'll be desperate for another hit. Yeah. No, I'm just not surprised to hear from him now, because it was time. I can't explain these unusual dreams he's at me. Anyway, take this. Give it to him. Should help him, at least in the short term. Bring him the bliss. Why don't I have a stash button there? I don't understand. Oh, okay. Gotta keep up my APM right now. Steven Dynamite lolls on the sidewalk. While he jerks less as he moves, his skin has taken on a gray hue and his chest heaves with each labored breath. His sunken eyes swivel towards you. He wets his parched lips and addresses you. Uh, hello, I'm relieved to see you. I, I thought you might not return. Can't trust anyone. This is a b bad place. Now you're not looking so great, dude. I I don't want to sleep because of those nightmares. I'm ravenous, so ravenous. But food makes me ill. I've got the shakes real bad too. I just I want this to end. Anyway, thanks for talking to bastard for me. Do you have my money? He didn't have your money. He gave me this. Oh. Yeah. 
Maybe kicking habit would be better though, yeah. It's purely circumstantial that I pick drugs as my escape. I just seek out another dependency. So I m might as well take Leaf's free hit. P pack it, please. Yeah, do whatever you want. I'm here to judge you. I'm just sitting here judging you. Yep, your funeral. Oh yeah, that's how some of those dreams. Yeah, I've been having bad dreams too. These aren't like ordinary dreams. They're visions. They're so real. I've put all kinds of substances into my body and I've never experienced anything like this. Yeah, explain the dreams. I'm walking through a series of dark, narrow halls. It stinks to high heaven, and I run into more and more people as I move forward. Some people are jostling me, but I'm starving, like I haven't eaten for days. I just want some food, so I press on. I start seeing children in the crowd. Ch children with terrible burns, disfigured faces. All these people are grabbing at me. Then I see teeth all around me. I feel the teeth on me. Hey, you know the drugs are making these nightmares worse, right? I, but I need them. I used to get my kicks from explosives. I loved blowing up stuff, seeing glass splintering, solid walls disintegrating, flames licking the sky. Not anymore. Now I stick to needles and pills. Yeah, you blew stuff up? That sounds awesome. I was a bomb maker. I designed custom ordnance. It was a dream job, plus very lucrative. Megacorps couldn't get enough of my devices I invented. I was t too high on my own ego to wonder what they were up to. Yeah, what were they doing? They were fueling wars. They often managed to sell to both sides in conflicts all over the world. Casualties be damned. Yeah, they would have they been doing it anyways, even without you. Oh, uh, were his bombs used against children, maybe? Civilian targets. <sighs> I'm from Guizhou. Sichuan has taken over much of the province, but pockets of resistance still remain. There are big... Political struggles, actions removed from the lives of ordinary people. Yet the village where I grew up in Guizhou was annihilated. These were t tobacco farmers, winemakers, peasants, not military. I recognized the distinctive patterns, the traces that were left behind. These were my bombs used to shatter the landscape of my childhood. Yeah, I'm getting what you're... you're putting out. I, I guess I must be feeling guilty about the bombs, huh? All the blood on my hands. I can't feel it all the time. I just like bombs. I didn't want anyone to get hurt. How am I ever going to make this go away? How will I live with myself? The drugs help me forget, but... Huh. I start helping people, dude. Helping? K kids? 
Stealing my... I wouldn't know where to begin. Need time to think. Yeah, children of the future. Help children. There are a couple of shelters where I used to crash when I was less down and out than I am now. There were lots of f families I could help out. But in the end, I probably need to go home to Guizhou when I can bring myself to. I tell you what, I'll think about it real hard you need to do something but we gave him the drugs so he won't damn oh you have an ability red samurai Oh, do we focus on samurai skills or on ghoul skills? Yeah. So he kills people with his sword. He's like a trained professional dude who cares about his reputation, maybe honor, stuff like that. He would definitely lean heavily into his samurai skills and less so his ghoul abilities, right? Oh, that's tough though, because I will probably literally never use a defensive ability like this, but I might use this. No, I think I think this dude just trains real hard with his weapons and skills and not so much his ghoul abilities. So let's let's do it. Let's get our money. Now where does he stay on the ship? So if smuggler has wares. What do you want, woman? We're talking here. Oh, okay. So dreams are bad enough people are just leaving. Give me my money. Oh, about those dreams. Aww. Oh, hey, Seattle. I hope I didn't catch you at a bad time. Why did I just say that? There's a recording. It doesn't matter if it's a bad time. Well, anyway, I was thinking about that talk we had, you know, the dream talk about the nightmares and stuff. I've got a friend here in town. She runs the Parlor of Five Phases. It's sort of our local magic shop in Talismonger. Name's Crafty. Anyway, she's smart. Real smart. Her mom was sort of a local authority on all things magical, and the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. If you want to ask anyone in town about these dreams, she'd be the right one to choose. Okay. So, multiple people being like, you need to go talk to that lady. Oh, these rats are adorable. Anyway, I just thought it might help. If you've already been talking to Crafty, please disregard this message. Alright, I'm out. Peace. God, males. Claim payment for your runs at the mission computer. I'm at the mission computer. Uh, 
How do I get payment for my job? Is it a pending job still? No. Oh, claim. Pff, I'm dumb. The Wampoan elders tell me that they've ousted all of their council of elders. Something to do with you exposing their efforts to cover up their own mess. It isn't the resolution I expected, but it's acceptable. If there's one thing I don't trust, it's people who won't pay what they owe. Thankfully, the Wampoans are more reliable than Ng and her allies, and so am I. Your payment is attached. Uh, so let's check our inbox again. What are these things? The Plague, I need you to come to the parlor. A friend and business partner of mine named Dr. Shen Yang has need of your services. Something about attending a fancy party in Repulse Bay. He was unwilling to give me the details. I think he wanted to size you up himself. A fancy party, yes, please. Duncan asked me to do some digging on my own into Raymond's history. I guess he doesn't trust kindly Cheng to give him the full story. I can't say I blame him, since she'd hide things from us if it was in her best interest to do so. So I've been poking around various corners of the Matrix, trying to dig up what I can. Most sinners leave a data trail the size of an aircraft carrier in their wake, working backward in time. Raymond starts out that way, but it slowly tapers away to nothingness. Sure, I can find some basic records in Seattle, power, utilities, a couple of public discussion sites that he'd signed up for, but the further back I get, the less I find. And the craziest part is, prior to 2032, I can't find anything at all. And that shouldn't be possible. It's like Raymond didn't exist before that. I don't know. I'm gonna keep digging. It'll take me a while. I'll let you know I get some news worth sharing. What? Yo, come see me if you have a chance. If I have a, I have a trade opportunity. Maximum. Meat? Oh, okay. Matrix and meat space, yeah. Ultrathron Visigoth, Judge of Titan. Interesting. What a strange young man. Um, do we have anything else? Oh, Raptor is the one who's slightly Russian. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. I want his drone. Oh, I think I should probably actually call it uh, a day for now so I can go get some lunch before it's too late. Um, how much money do I have? Oh, 15. Okay. Let's go drone shopping first, and then I'll get off. Let's see what weird Matthew drone cutler has to sell. Wow, um, oh, they're also expensive. Things. I'll never use this machete. I'll never use secure rigor clothing. Well, goodbye. Well, I think it's about time to we'll save over this 2015 game that never got past, like, the second quest or whatever. So, goodbye, other the plague. Wow, that's strange. How was I this much earlier in the game, still doing City of Darkness? 
but I'd already spent 72 karmas. Huh. Cool. Uh, well, thanks for chilling with me. Um, yes, I was the plague in 2015. I did not uh, finish the... Um, I didn't even get as far as I am now. I don't know why I stopped playing back then. Because it is actually a really good game. I had done both the other Shadowrun games uh, before then, and just, I guess I was burned out from it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, that's why I'm the Plague in this time around as well. I'm using the same portrait, even. That's sad. How far did you get, Ace? Were you playing Hong Kong or Dragonfall or Shadowrun Returns? Oh. Aww. It is fun, it is fun. I just finished Dragonfall um, a couple of weeks ago and uh, really enjoyed it. I don't know. The Shadow Returns is pretty short and, and easy. I don't know. But yeah, that's fine. You don't have to play it, of course. But I think it's worth playing. Well, later. It's lunchtime. Nom nom nom. Oh, I wonder if I'm...